to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Let's go. I'm ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV episode 69. I was waiting for Hello. some sort of finger uh, something. I, no, you know, I'm tired of being accused. I swear too much. I make too many innuendos. Blah, 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 blah. So today I'm going to be the kinder, gentler me. Oh, okay. Great. And as, as people will see in the interview, you use the F word way more than I did. I'll beep so, them out. I'll just edit them out. And that won't be true. I'll make that. Go ding yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Scott Johansson, my lovely co-host. I'm Jason Walker. Uh, how are you, Scott? I'm great. I feel like we just did this. I know. I, I, I can't. Dude. Wait till someone offers me money to do this. <laughs> it's coming. We're, I think we're 100 people away. Um, uh, first, I want to thank Paul Gill for sharing us out and getting us a ton of other subscribers. And that goes for everybody. Please like, subscribe. Give it to your family members. Even if they don't want to watch this show, they could just not watch it. And as long as they're a subscriber, that would help us out. Um, if you do want to say, no, I, 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 I'm not a Bigfoot believer like Paul. So don't let that scare you off from subscribing. So. That, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you want to send us an email, it is, I have to click over here. It is modelclubtv at gmail.com, modelclubtv at gmail.com. Send us submissions for the gallery at the end, questions, comments, hate mail, whatever you want to send. And oh, I love a, hate mail. They're, they're, oh, and grail mail. If you're looking for a model kit, don't forget. We're doing grail mails. You need help grail finding mail, something. Trying to hook people up. Try, yep. yep. Took them in the, in the uh, and, model and kit. And what's our voicemail uh, phone number? And our vo the there we are. Right it's 708-816-4299. 708 Eight one six forty two ninety nine. We have two voicemails this episode, so that's a change. Someone called the show. Did I can't you, wait. Did you listen? No, you said you were going to play him. Oh, I no, but I think you have to hear. Never mind. Oh, then you'll I have didn't to, listen. Yeah, you'll have to listen. We'll have to pause. <laughs> yeah, to pause and listen. We have this episode is going to be kind of a, a a departure. Would you say weird? I don't know. I liked it. We have uh, Mark new Henry. Direction. Yeah, a direction. New frontier. Uh, new frontier. Look, I'm wearing my shirt, by the way. No one even <laughs> hey, look at that. Who are those handsome devils? I know. Which <laughs> I talked to Vince, uh, and they reprinted his shirt, but they cut the skull off of uh, this over here. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so we're going to figure go to out Red Bubble and yes. get it. Don't go to Jason's site that he had to. Make I, my shirt. shirt from there was fine. So I don't know what's going on over there. We. Um, Red Bubble. We're going to be trying to do, I think, our own instead of going from through those places. So yeah, we'll leave the, leave the store up. I like the store. We'll leave the store up, but I'm going to start doing stuff on our own outside of that, like for shows. Yeah, sure you are. Okay. Anyway, we have Mark Henry on from uh, of Goblin's Hut, and he's here to talk to us about a paint, and it's called Dirty Down. And we found out it's because it's the opposite of clean up, which I thought was pretty awesome. So dirty down, it's a way of adding verdigris or rust or grime to your models. And I thought when I first saw it, I was like, <clears throat> some of our guys are going to love this and I don't think they know about it. So I happened to run into <clears throat> him at Adepticon and asked him to come on and he came on and we had a great conversation and it's not just about the paint. It's about kind of mixing hobbies and crossover and trying to like save this whole thing. So stick around for that. It's a long one. You might want to watch this in a couple different parts. I have a feeling I haven't edited yet, but I have a feeling this is going to be a long episode. Uh, yeah, there we are. Thanks, Mark, for coming on. Interviews a little bit later. And let's start with uh, Wonderfest feeling. Scott, you feeling? Uh, let's roll. Still feeling pretty sad about that? I wasn't feeling pretty sad about it. So you just brought it up. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, still okay? Like, it's it's bittersweet, you know. I was thinking about it today. Um, it's weird, like not planning and going at yeah. this point. Um, Did you cancel your room? Did you get that straightened out with your uh, friend that we involved? Uh, no, um, my doppelganger will be there in my room. <laughs> it's doppelganger, so. not doppelganger. That's something. <laughs> oh, he's a gagger. Trust me, he's a gagger. <laughs> but so. uh, hopefully, that'll go off without a problem. But. Um, no, yeah. he's now listed. He can check into my room and um, okay. 
cool. He'll pay for it and blah blah blah. So uh cool. Uh so I was able to help him out. I do want to talk I don't about... know why, because I can't stand him. Wow. You can't stand a lot of people, <laughs> it seems. I you're number one. I'm number one, I know. <laughs> but I want to talk about Picard again. Picard, spoilers? No. We spoilers. are doing spoilers. So if you have not watched the new season of Picard, stop Fast now. Forward. Fast forward Here about two minutes, because we're not going to spend that much time on it. Um, we were right <laughs> about what it was in the last episode, which is kind of, yeah. it's my <laughs> only really like hang up was uh, kind of figured it out, but I loved it. Do you love, what'd you think? Did I love it? <sighs> I, I, thought I it- still think, and, and this is just, my opinion, I'll probably get blasted for this. Oh, blasted. Okay. Going to get blasted. If all good things would have been the last we ever saw of Next Generation, that would have been okay. All right? Um, it was the best ending series finale of any TV show to this day that I've ever seen. So um, I enjoyed Generations, I enjoyed First Contact. I even enjoyed the other two, not as much. Uh, Insurrection and Nemesis. I was okay with Picard Season 1. Season 2 was a little slow. And of all of it, I I did like this the best. But and I think that's it what... It was a little anticlimactic for me. Okay? Well, and... uh, yes. And I think because of what it turned out to be. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I'm kind of with you. I really wish nothing else had ever happened with any of the next generation people until this. Like if that was Mm -hmm. the season finale and then none of the movies happened, nothing else happened. Well, deep space nine should have happened like that stuff with Worf, like, right. Cause it sets up all this, but I'm talking just specific next generation labeled movies. If there were none of those and it just went to Picard season three, Holy cow. That would have been cool. Like just, although you might need a little bit of like something in between there to kind of a little bit of first contact, maybe. Yeah. Uh, like a couple little things to set, to like set things up, but I really like this. I thought it was one of the better TV things I've seen in a very long time. Mm-hmm. And it didn't make me angry. <laughs> oh, and, it, and- and, and that's I the thing. Like, there problem. was some little girl power. There's some minor things in there that are nitpicky, right? Like swearing. Well, for you. I'm not sure if swearing should be in Star Trek yet or ever. But the when they did swear, it made sense, as opposed to just mfing everything and right. and swearing inappropriately. Like when my favorite part, I think, was when Riker drops the bat. <laughs> And he goes, shit, this thing's heavy. And he goes to pick it up and he's like, holy cow, I didn't know this thing was that heavy. That would felt like appropriate swearing as opposed to uh-huh. like swearing like I do just as part of talking all the time. The girl power thing was okay. Didn't bother me. See, and what's funny is, you know, you focused on that and I didn't. It was yeah. like, it went by me unnoticed but until you said it. And I think it's only because it's so hype. Like in Star Trek, it doesn't bother me because it's always been that way. But since yeah, everything so else was, is yeah. so like woman rule everything and got to make the men look stupid on so many like, other shows. Like Incredibles 2. Yeah, and, uh, like it's always like the doofusy guy. And this had a nice balance to it where you had the guys doing stuff, you had the girls doing stuff, you had everybody doing stuff, and it kind of balanced out well. So it didn't bother me like it bothers me in other stuff. Um, but I... Well, like seven of nine is a badass all yeah, the time. All the time. So it, it's you know. Yeah, I it's. If you haven't watched, if you were on the fence about it, skip the two first two seasons, like I did, and just watch season three. I won't it's, say that. I I would say still watch the first. Nothing two matters. Like what? Like you don't have to. You don't have to. They even wrote his Romulan wife off the show. Like you never hear or see her again. Nothing. Like it didn't. Even, she was in that first episode and then gone. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if they were she was going to be at the end of it, but yeah, no. nope, gone. Doesn't matter, and it doesn't even matter. Spoiler: that Picard's not in his original body. There's some little things about it that matter, but as long as you know that going in, hmm. which again, that's this is from the other season, dude. If you die and can get a new body made, 
why the hell would you make your body exactly 95 million years old already anyway? Wouldn't you start over with a younger body and go longer? I don't, whatever. Anyway, I anyway, loved it. It was fun. The little tidbit at the end was fun. The, um, the po- yes, the, the way it ended, I thought was great. Both, both the mid credit scene and the actual end. So. Yeah. But it was okay. You know, it, I have the problem, though, with all these internet shows. And even the, one, the ones I've liked, uh, I really liked the first season of Jessica Jones. I, I've liked all the Daredevil seasons. But it's like they peak in the middle or towards the end. But by the time the final episode comes, then almost anticlimactic. And that's there, there's a reason for that. It's content. They have to stretch it out. Okay. As opposed, like if this was a good, like, I think six episodes. Although there wasn't really, I felt, I'm probably not as mad about that as you. Like, there was a couple drag, but you're right. Jessica Jones should have just been one season and been done. Mm. And, and Daredevil, the first, like, First two, perfect. Like that. Well, third season was good. I, I yeah. enjoyed the third season, but it was just still. Yeah, My, I, I have a, and I think we had this kind. I I cut this conversation out before when we had George on, and I still no one has answered this question for me appropriately about Starfleet and the Federation. I don't understand something, and I I'm gonna say this because I want someone to leave the answer in the comments. And I think I've, I don't think I've done this before. Vulcans have their own ships, right? Ferengi have their, because they show up in first contact. They, their Vulcans are flying around in ships. Okay. Ferengi have their own ships. Klingons have their own ships. Cardassians have their own ships. Romulans have their own ships. Everyone in the Federation has, has their own ships. What was wrong? Get a shot at? No. Well, the kid just got home. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So why doesn't Earth have its own ships? We do. No, we don't. Those are Federation ships, correct? Or are they Starfleet ships? Well, the Federation is based in Earth. Probably. But why did it get based in Earth? Because the Federation was there before Earth. We joined it in first contact. So why are like, where well, were like the we Earth? nearly joined it in first contact. Well, we that's. Wasn't that, that was the point our first of the contact thing? with. with well, that's when other they accepted us into the Federation species. of Planets, right? No, they accepted us in the species that have developed warp drive. Okay, so but so then I don't it went from there. Think, but then, why yeah. did the Federation end up on Earth? That's what I don't understand. And then, well, because why, we finagled it like we do everything else. That's probably. That's probably true. Okay, so why? But all of our ships have other species on it because they're Federation ships. Because Starfleet Academy is on Earth. But where's the Earth sh- ships? Like, where are just the, uh, the... I'm an Earthling, this is my ship. Okay. Does that... Uh, am I, the Ferengi? I, I, All right, hold on. The Ferengi, the Klingons, the Kardashians. Not Kardashians, the, Kardashians. <laughs> Kardashians and Kardashians, too. <laughs> They're from another planet. Yeah. Um. Okay. All not necessarily in the Federation. Okay. The Klingons, I don't think, are in the Federation. There's just a treaty with the Klingons. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the Vulcan ship you saw doesn't necessarily mean Vulcans have their... They did have their own ships. But now, again, I would... My answer to this would be, once everyone joined the Federation, the Vulcans then became part of the Federation. Therefore, they served on Federation ships. Doesn't mean they don't have their own ships. So right, but, so then where but are their own ours? ships aren't part of the Federation fleet. Wh- which brings me to this point, like in the show, when the Federation turns, where's our ships to go fight it? Like I, where's where's the Earth? Well, fe- because, Earth again, by because itself it's based here because it's based here. You know what? Okay. Anyway, don't overthink something else. Okay, <laughs> don't overthink three D printing. That happens on a daily basis. No All right, shit. Picard, watch it. Season three. Toy show. I went to the toy show. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, but it's a toy show you used to go to all the time, and Jamie wanted to go with some of her friends. It was ridiculously packed and huge. What's your history with that show? You used to have a table there, right? Or- used to be. I, I've had a table there. It yeah. used to be huge. What's the name of it? Uh, Kane County Antique Toy and Doll Show. It used yeah. to be it. Okay. 
Um, happens in April, happens in June, happens in October. And October and April are always a crapshoot. Weather-wise, I've been there when it was rainy. I've been there when it was cold. I've been there when it was blistering hot. June, you can pretty much count on blistering hot. When I went, yes, you'd have newer toys, but it was a lot of antique, you know, old games, old toys, whatever. But there were always people there vending newer things as well. Now, from what you've told me, I haven't been to this show probably in 25 to 30 years. Yeah. Okay. And from what I've heard, they've remodeled and built other buildings from what it used There's to be. There's a ton too. of buildings. It's but it, it used to be yeah. a fairground. So yeah, it still a lot is a fairground. You're outside. still going in the rabbit house. You're still going in the poultry house. Okay. And there's some of them outside. There's one big indoor, like two big indoor ones. Yeah. And well, there always was two big indoor ones. Yeah. So, and then some of the other houses were indoor indoors, well. but yeah. So again, I haven't been in a long time, so I don't know how much it's changed. When I first went, when I first started going back in 1986, you pull into that parking lot that's like right inside there and you park right in the middle there. No problem. Okay. And then as it progressed, they'd park you next to the fairgrounds and you'd have to walk in unless you were a dealer. If you were a dealer, yeah. then you could park inside. Okay. But, um, it was crowded. So yeah, like one of the last times walk. I went, yeah, it was crazy to get in. And, um, you know, it, it's very seldom. I, I'm going to say this about it. You're not going to get many deals there, okay? Unless you barter with somebody. Yeah. And over the years, I've bought some things there. There were some model kits. There were some Aurora. There was the most of the, the stuff I did see was Aurora. Mm -hmm. I saw some Sakuda stuff and some Halcyon, some Max. Like there were more model kits than I expected, but it was o overwhelmingly Funko Pops. And Star Wars toys with yeah, which the means, next. Yeah. And to me, that's not antique toy. No, no, not at all. And that's like, that's my point. It's just like, I don't. And then I think runner up would be GI Joe and He-Man, which is stuff from when I was a kid. It's antiques at this point, but not vintage. There were your like sixties dealers. You could tell who was like stuff from the sixties. Oh yeah. Fifties. Like you can tell. And those are the, I think more interesting booths to look at, but who the hell is buying Star Wars toys? I don't like. Who still likes Star Wars at this point? It's garbage. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. It's garbage. There's nothing good going on with Star Wars. And Oh, boy. I Like, you really he need another it. Millennium I Falcon? Like, I don't understand it. And I and Funko Pops? Like, what? I own one. I think I own one as well. And someone bought it I, for I, me. I got the creature from the Black Lagoon just because I thought it was kind of cool looking. I have it. the Balrog. Or, yeah, or, um... The Witch King and Balrog, I think. But to think that you I've were going to thought make... about buying a few of them, and then I look at them, I go, "These are just so silly." I have some of the minis. I didn't get like the yeah. Saturday, it reminds minis. me of the comics in the '90s where everyone thought, like, "Oh, I'm going to get rich with this variant," and then it just. Toosh. And I think that's where it's headed. But man, it was Let's cool to go. A collectible. I Let's could not imagine going there in the summer, though. Oh boy. Like, oh yeah, I, it, yeah, it can don't... be hot and mm. stinky. So anyway, we have our giveaways this episode, just like before, uh, we're going to edit it in here, uh, to save some time for Scott because of the dog and happily all of the giveaways that I had have now been mailed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three giveaways. I want to thank you right up front with Scott on screen. Here is the Chuck Homolka magazines who sent those two magazines in the Bigfoot from Gilman productions and Paul Gill and the fly from CG blade and pseudoverse creations. So I'll pull those names here after we're done and hopefully, you know, someone who did not win last episode <laughs> wins. So, all right. Give all me. right. First up, it's giveaway time. We have the Bigfoot from Paul Gill and Gilman Productions. Let's get the button going. Here it is from the Patterson film. Head on over to YouTube last episode. Look at the comments. We had some great people put in some really cool Bigfoot stuff to watch. So. You're going to win this bust. Who's it going to be? Thank you, Paul Gale, again. You're always so generous to us. Let's see who is going to walk away. We hit shuffle a couple times. And here we go. Who's going to be our winner? And it looks like... Kendall Conniff! 
Kendall Conniff is our winner. Congratulations. All right, up next. Let me close this window. Oh, I'm having some problems with the windows today. All right, next up is for the magazines brought to us by Chuck uh, Homoka. He gave us two. It'll be a random one. I'm pulling two names for these magazines. You don't get to pick. I'm just putting one in the envelope. So get what you get. So first up, here we go. Doing twice. So web B. There we go. All right. Spinning. First winner is Sun. No. Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson. Get one of the magazines. There we go. Going to remove his name from the wheel. We're going to shuffle and we're going to spin again. Let's see who's going to win this time. It is James Downing gets the other magazine. So well done to both of you. Congratulations. Get those out to you as soon as I can. Here we go. And then oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Uh, this window is now closed. And our last window coming up here is All right. four. The Fly Kit from Monarch brought to us by CG Blade and Pseudoverse Creations, the Pseudo Fly uh, in the comments. So here we go. Going to hit a shuffle and we're going to have our winner. If you won in the last episode or last two giveaways, if you're in here, you cannot win this. So here we go. Zippy Z is the winner for the Fly Kit. Zippy Z. All right, everybody, send me an email at. Close this down. Send me an email at modelclubtv at gmail.com. Let's bring that up. There it is, modelclubtv at gmail.com. If you're a winner, and I need, uh, if you're, I'm not grumpy, it's vintage. I've been trying to get your uh, information for a while because you won that t shirt a while back from the other show. So please, modelclubtv at gmail.com, send that to us and we'll get the stuff out to you. Back to the show. See you later. Hey, congratulations to our winners. We're on a news and reviews, Scott. Make your noise. News and reviews. All right, first up, the new issue. We are recording on the 24th of April, and the new issue of Amazing Figure Modeling Magazine. Figure Modeling. The new issue of Amazing Fuck, Fig- you're right writer. For that. I fucked up. The new issue of Amazing Figure Modeler Magazine is out. Uh, you can download it today. Again, it's gone PDF, so if you forgot, you will not be getting a paper copy anymore. And head on over to AFM, and I'll put the information down below to go. It, it, this cover looks amazing. Like, I haven't, I haven't got mine yet, so I, I just saw this as I, I was actually, putting the show together. Believe it or not, I haven't done it yet either, but I will so, soon. Yeah, we'll do it. Like, it came out today while I was putting the show together. So, uh, I have not looked at it. I don't have an article in this one. I know some people that do, and some of it looks really, really good from what I did see. So, and Terry called while we're in our interview. So, whew. Well, he do not have time for us any other time. No, he doesn't. That's because I'm printing stuff for the class, which I just finished. We'll talk about on the workbench. Um, amazing, fid- figure, amazing figure modeler. If you're looking for back issues, there's a great story here. Uh, uh, Cult TV man drove out, Steve Iverson, drove out to Terry's house, picked up Terry's entire backlog, I think, of, of magazines. Just about Atlanta, Georgia to <laughs> Columbus, Ohio. Grinding, <laughs> grinding that stuff on the pavement yeah. all the way back. Um, so if he's has a super warehouse sale. I'll put the link up for that. If you're looking for back issues, head on over to Cult TV Man, and that's where you can get some of those. So get a good deal. All right, first up, I just I'll bet you if you order some, I'll bet you money. He'll throw in one of these cool stickers. Okay. Going to highlight Sunray Collectibles, a Patreon that I just joined yesterday. Uh, he had been sending me some stuff in the past, and we've shared it on the show, I think, before. And great stuff. He's just starting out. There's only a couple months of content in there. But if you want to get in on the ground floor, this is your chance. Uh, I think $15 a month, you're able to sell your prints. Which So I am doing that. So if you're interested in anything you see, let me know. Probably after Wonderfest or like Get me on a list before. Get you on a list before if you want one of these. Uh, a really cool Wolverine. You get two optional heads and suits, it looks like, or heads. 
Is he shirtless in that one? I can't tell. Um, but you get a great motorcycle. And I think a really good Joker statue, a couple different options for the head. Uh, his little Robin body uh, stuff, Cupid dollies hanging up. There. I, I like the Joker. Yeah, the well, I saw good. the Joker. I it's been a lot. while since we've seen a good skinny kind of Joker like that. Like not the movie version, more of a like, and not a game version, but more of like comic. And then from uh, Dark Stalkers, you got a Morrigan and a Thomas Wayne Batman figure. I don't know what the story is in it. Did they do a Thomas Wayne as Batman? I stopped thing? reading comics in 1993. Okay. So <laughs> there was something with Thomas Wayne. And the other one is uh, 2B from a video game. Uh, I know I forgot the name right now, but it's one of the best 2Bs I've seen in a while. So great stuff. Sunray coll- collectibles. Check them out. If you're interested in 3D printing, you can print your own. If you need them, you can also contact me and we'll go from there. You want to take this one, Scott? I can't wait. From our good friend, Mr. Tony Cipriano. We have the Gorn Captain from the episode of the original Star Trek series, Arena. Uh, resin model bust, 3D printed, available in two scales. Caddy finally listen to me. Uh, quarter scale is $135. That includes shipping. And just so you know, shipping on something like this is at least $15. So, you know, it, it's... And then third scale, 165 shipped. So... In the United States. Uh, flat rate U.S. only, please. Yes. If someone wants this out of the country and you want it that bad, call me and I'll see what I can do for you about having Tony send it to me and then I'll send it to you. <laughs> Tony hates the post office. Tony hates doing the paperwork for international. And it's uh, I, I hate can, doing the international. If paperwork. I can help, I will help. So, and that goes for the rest of the stuff we're going to show as well. Cool. Um, cause I'd like to see Tony get to say, uh, sale. Cool. So as long as you want to pay for the extra shipping, I'll ship it to you. No, the second new thing oh. on the super, uh, is from a Bugs Bunny, um, Chuck Jones, uh, short super rabbit. And it's Bugs Bunny as a super rabbit. And this is uh five resin parts, 10 inches tall, uh, 3d printed. Kit comes with wires for whiskers. I'm gonna re finally did that yeah, too. Yeah, uh huh. Um, 135 dollars shipped again to the U.S. only. Um, again, figure something out. I think Brent Krug just got one of these. Um, and was doing a review on it. Oh, so, cool. All um, right. I'll link to then, that. I'll link to that. The next one is now. This is not just a Superman. Just so okay. you know. What is it? This is from the Filmation cartoon, The New Adventures of Superman from the 60s. Filmation also did Super Friends. So this stuff kind of morphed into okay. Super Friends. All right. So, you know, so if you look at this and say, well, it's not very detailed and stuff like that. Well, this is based on the animation. So uh, really cool, though. Really nice looking piece, yeah. actually. I think you could do a really cool paint job with that comic style on here. That would look Yeah, awesome. $175 shipped. I also want to take notice uh the logo on the base, the logo, the S on the chest, and the cape. Notice they're not something. <laughs> what are they not, Jason? They are not a quarter inch off his chest. I know. I know. And it makes such a difference. It really does. This to me is Superman. This is classic Superman. This is what Superman should be. Um, I wouldn't mind a, God a more... damn it. <laughs> this I, is God my damn, Superman. But I, you know, I wouldn't mind it. Tony sent me. One the other day he says, "What are these potato chip clips holding his cape on?" Is some <laughs> you know, all these guys that are doing these modern Supermans. And if I see one more Christopher Reeve Superman, I'm gonna puke. Okay. Oh, here. Oh, oh. All right. Oh, it, I don't think he was the best choice. I, it, it's not that the movies were bad. It's Clark Kent was laughable, stupid looking. Okay. George Reeves was it, man. George Reeves. Clark Kent was good. George Reeves' Superman was good. Christopher Reeve. Oh, boy. You just, uh-oh. You stepped in it. Well, leave the comments. I, no, I didn't hate him. I, no. You know, it's, I don't hate him, but I mean, it, it's so. All right. And I believe next in this series will be Aquaman. Aquaman, cool. Now, 
again, the classic Aquaman that nobody ever does. Aquaman doesn't have long hair. He doesn't have a beard. He doesn't have a freaking hook I, on his I hand. I agree with you. Okay. I agree. I agree. Now, the only thing I don't, it's not that I don't like about this one. It's it's accurate um, from the cartoon done by the same people. But by the time we got to Super Friends, the black boots were gone, and there was like a fin on the back of his calf. Okay. Okay. Which I think was more comic accurate. Um, but again, this is based on the cartoon, so it's um. Gotcha. And what's this? They look like this is yeah. Simon Bar Sinister and his uh, sidekick uh, Cad. Uh, that's a penis for a nose. Uh, only you would see that, but of course it is. <laughs> anyway, those go with Tony's underdog piece, I believe. They're in scale with his underdog piece. Oh, cool. I love the Simon Bar Sinister. Yeah. I like the cat, too. Those are 135 each. I think he's got, it'll, uh, if you buy two, I think it's uh, any two for 250 all three for 300 So if you want the underdog with it, all three for 300 So it's a nice set. Um, This is up your alley, isn't it? This is actually an older one, but... I know he's got a couple of these printed right now, or he did. And this is big, just so you know. I mean, I have one. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Spaceman Spiff, man. And uh, yeah, mine, of course, is solid. Uh, <laughs> that's before we got to Mr. Uh, Tony and um, taught him how to print hollow. Taught him how to print hollow or convinced him to print hollow. So anyway. Uh, this is some stuff. Is uh, all of his stuff is still available? The Space Ghost is uh, all of his stuff. So, Tony Cipriano sculpture or Tony Cipriano. Um, I gotta get Tony a button. This reminds me, we have a lot. We have to get Tony a button. Yeah, Tony needs more than one button. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, cool. yeah, it's a Tony Bonanza. Tony Bonanza. <laughs> Up yeah. next from uh, Pestilence yeah. Labs. Yeah, we better hurry this up because my wife's ready to yeah. go to bed. From Pestilence Labs is what they're calling the Mask series from Jeff Yeager. Uh, is the original what the creature from the Black Lagoon was going to look like. So I think they're going to do a little like, I, I think if this line continues, it's like things that almost were. And they mm-hmm. just realized, nope, that doesn't look very good. This is, I just saw this today. This is actually yeah. really nice, uh, really accurately done. Um, I love really the cool. idea. I love the idea of masks, of doing them as mm-hmm. little masks. Like, I, I'm, I'm a mask collector of myself. So to see little kits of masks, I think, is a great idea. So if they continue this, doing Man, other gonna, things. No, I'm not going to give the idea. No, don't you dare. Don't let them get it. But I idea. just got an idea. Okay. Tell me when we close. But well okay. done, sculpted, like I said, by Jeff Yeager. And you got some little like sculpting tools down there, and that looks cool. Yeah. I like that. Good luck casting those. Yeah, that's going right. to be fun. Uh, from Vengeance Studios, they have a Hellboy coming out for the Hellboy fans. Uh, I think it's more of like an original design Hellboy. Uh, I am more preferable to the comic style. I'm not a big movie Hellboy guy. I like the comic version. But this one I think is really cool. It's got a couple different head options. Uh, head on over to their Patreon as well. Uh, sign up if you are interested in one of these. Again, I think I can print that for you as well. Or Jordan can print it for you. Either way, uh, is all good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then we have from Chuck. Chuck sent this over to us, and it's a monster scene. Scott, you want to talk about this one? You know what? This is sculpted by Rob Blusky, I think. This is actually not new. This is... it's, it's one whole... it, Well, let's preface this. Chuck always sends us the Monsters in Motion flyer that has yeah. a bunch of stuff on it. And I and that's stuff that I hadn't so, seen in a while. This stuff's been out there for a long time on eBay uh, by Blue Sky, I think it is. Blue Sky? Yeah, or something something like that. And it's Rob Blusky. And I've, I've ordered from Rob before. He's a good guy. He actually sculpted a few, one or two things for Rob Rotundi. Um, but these have been out for a while. But it's a nice, there's there's some cool ones. There's not just these two. There's some cool ones from Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Um. I have the one he does of the two skeletons jumping out from the animation at the beginning. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I remember you showed that. You showed us that. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I, I did. Yeah. Also in that flyer that Chuck sent was the X plus uh, Dracula that's coming out. The plastic kit sculpted by Tony Cipriano. And 
it brought me, I'm like, oh crap, we have a ton of X plus stuff coming. So this is like a golden, like, I don't want to say golden age, but like a renewal of plastic model kit. And it kind of goes into the, the miniature side of things where they, most of that stuff is plastic these days from games workshop. And I'm like, why aren't they doing more plastic? If you could do this detailed of miniatures, why can't we bring like make good plastic kits again? And I'm fortunate enough. I've seen a lot of in progress shots of this. And so I'm just going to say this before you're quick to criticize anything. Okay. Remember there's about seven, seven, 20 layers of art direction that go into this. So after yes. And, and decisions I think were made, yes. but I think this is so, like, if you just want to, it looks great. Yeah. I love so, the hands. It's a Dracula kit. X plus is killing it, which brings me to some of the next stuff, which is I have so much stuff on pre-order from cult TV, man. This is the Shin Ultraman they got coming out. Plastic kit. Flipping beautiful. Can't wait to do this thing. Uh, and if you have not seen Shin Ultraman, it's well worth it. It's so, so good. But they have this plastic model kit coming out. They have the Revenge of the Creature coming out. And I want to highlight, Adam Doherty uh, posted the box art for this. And it's you can see in this first image here, it's 1A scale. I love the box art for this thing alone. Just that box, that creature is just gorgeous mm -hmm. looking. So I yeah. think the paint job on this creature is, I want to say perfect, because it almost matches. It, it is that's what the creature yeah, it's looks got the like. Gold highlights that have the gold highlights, the kind of the yeah. same kind of solid green all over. The really red lips that look ridiculous, but I think this is handled in a way that makes it not look that silly. But mm -hmm. I love this paint job on this buildup on the box art. When I do and mine, I you... it's going to look like this. And also, a little the really cool touches. I love the fish. I love like my only gripe on this is I wish it was swimming like on one foot, like somehow, like his ankle was touching the anchor, and he's you know what though? Up more higher. Um, when we get to our guest, uh, what a great kit to use his rust product on on yeah. that anchor. Yep, absolutely. All right. Cool. Next, also from X Plus, this Jurassic Park T Rex coming out. I have this on pre order. One thirty. This thing kill. And I remember the very first model kit that I paint. I used an airbrush on was Horizons Jurassic Park T Rex, and I thought that was an amazing model. Like really, this fills that so well done. All plastic. You can see the parts break down here. All of this stuff can again can be pre ordered. Is it going to come with the guy? In yeah, the, it comes the with the guy, the okay. base, the the cord. There's cords in there to make the wires. That is kind of nice. And it's a decent price too. It's not like it's only like sixty bucks or fifty five. Like it's not that expensive. Um, I I'm loving what X Plus is doing in terms of just plastic model. And then we're on to our well winner update. Scott teased this last episode. I think it's been finalized. What do yep, we got here? It is finalized. It's available uh, on CG Trader. Um, and uh, you can um, get it there. I have it already, obviously. And uh, you know what I like about this is if you don't want to build the base, just the figures alone would stand good. But this is um, Marvin and K9. And I don't need to take credit for things, but it's nice. If I would have got some credit, but uh, the arms on the side were the Bugs Bunny. Remember, I mentioned the ears in the you front. Did. Yep the the arms were my idea. So I'm just <laughs> saying, you're an idea guy. I'm an I'm an idea man. Okay, uh, really nice. And then another Ruby Ghoulies character that I didn't even know about. Is that what this is? Because I saw the base and I was like, what? Yes. What? Okay. It, it, it's it's um. He, he sent me the model sheet. I should show it because he's going to do them all. Okay. And um, so this is Icky, and Icky's really cool looking. Yeah, I love, it's a blue demon, right? Yeah, he, he knocked cool. this out. So I love it. So uh, that's it. Yeah. All right, workbench. It's all printing. I, I, that's where I'm at. It's I've been printing for Mark. I've been printing for Terry. You've been printing. I'm printing for Wonderfest, printing for clients. Oh. I you have your printed this for myself. And I got to tell you, I love it. I know it you're, you're arguing with me about it, but I, it, there's just one little thing about it. I love it. It's based on the artwork and you hit the artwork. Perfect. 
He is said he's starting to make his nameplates so they're removable because not everyone likes them, so there's no key or anything. Oh, that's all right. I like so. That. This was printed at 150 percent. So with any luck, you'll have some of these to take with you to Wonderfest, but they won't be quite this big. If okay. Somebody wants one this big. You better special let me order know now. Yeah, and I'll try to send order. it with Jason. So, um, but yeah. Uh, my little workbench tip that I want to talk about is a glue that I picked up. <laughs> Were you there on the on the Discord when I first used this glue? Everyone was making fun of me. Uh, so it's a glue that I picked up at Adepticon from Creature Caster called Beast Bond, and I just figured it was a rebranded, you know, like all hobby stores get their own CA glue kind of thing mm-hmm. and they just put their own label on it that could still be the case but i have i i'm gonna order this stuff by the case because this was the most fast acting most amazing super glue i have used in a very long time on glue and a 3d print together and glue i think it's formulated for resin specifically um but it works fantastic on 3d prints Mm-hmm. And like almost instant bond. And I was blown away by it. So head on over to Creature Caster. Beast Bond is the glue. And it's it it's great glue. Like just great solid glue. So workbench. That's about it. It's just been printing. I have not been had like no painting at all. Nothing. Okay. That brings us to our guest. Uh we have Mark Henry, not the wrestler. And I'm sure he hears that all the time. And he probably See, and I never even heard of that wrestler. Really? Uh, don't be mad that I even said that. So maybe I'll cut that. Um, we have Mark Henry from Goblin's Hut. And Goblin's Hut is a, I, they are a distributor and seller of Dirty Down products. And it's a paint that I thought everyone here in this side of the hobby world would like to see. And we want it was our first guest that we've been able to get on that's more involved in the wargaming and miniature side of things. So it allowed us to have a conversation about that. It is a long conversation. There's a lot of stuff like just, it was, it was a very fun conversation. We had some, a lot of stuff I got to edit out because I told the story and uh, we want to thank Mark for coming on. Uh, we have a promo code. Uh, if you're interested in any of this stuff, head on over to Goblin's Hut. We'll have the link down below. MCTV is the promo code for some, I think he said 10% off, right? Something All like caps. Yes. All caps. Okay. And uh, if you want to pick some up, it is a bit expensive. I'll say that right off the bat. But once you see what it can do and you give it like it's well worth the money. And I, I, I have my three bottles here that I picked up at the show. Uh, I wanted to wait to use them until after we talked to him just to get some tips. Uh, I have the moss. I have the verdigris. And I have the rust. And I bought a what can is of the spray. Is that like patina? The blue, like, yeah, the blue patina kind of stuff. So. Uh, check out our great interview with Mark and Goblin's Hut, and just it's a great hobby conversation. And it goes, it's this is like I said, this is going to be a long episode. They have um, a Facebook page, or not a Facebook? Uh, they YouTube have Instagram as well. again. All that stuff I'll have down below Instagram and their website, all that stuff. So and YouTube There's also channel, other videos yeah, on how YouTube to use channel. this product. Lots um, of people. You can you, YouTube it. You'll find it. Uh, and I'm going to also be doing one. I prep some bases. And I'm going to be trying it out, and I'll post that in our how-to pages as well uh, of me just kind of fumbling my way through it after just listening to what he had to say. So enjoy our interview with Mark and Goblin's Hut about Dirty Down. Dirty Down, Thunder Jeep. All right. All right, everybody. Welcome back. We are here with Mark Henry of Goblin's Hut and the U.S. distributor of Dirty Down. So, That's right. Mark, how are you doing? You good? I'm doing wonderful. I really appreciate uh, running into you at Adepticon and uh, for you to ask me on. So it is. it was kind of like serendipity. I was leaving the main hall, and I kind of explained Adepticon to the people that watch this show, because they had no idea, most of the people that watch this, and that's kind of what I want to talk about, too. Um, I was in there, I was like, I had just saw a video, I think it was Duncan Rhodes painting like some scenery for Kill Team the inside of the ship or something. And he was using the rust paint for it. It was either Duncan or peachy. One of the two. I think it was painting face. That's what it was. Okay. Painting face. So it was painting face. And I was like, Holy crap, that stuff looks awesome. I wonder if it's going to be at a So as I'm walking around, I'm like, Oh, that rust paint. 
And I walk out the door and you just happen to be like right there. And I was like, oh shit, it's right there. So I want you to kind of explain what Dirty Down is, how the system works. But before we get into that, I want to talk about you a little bit. Um, how'd you get involved in selling paint <laughs> at conventions? Like, where did you start? How did you start? How old a guy are you? What uh, kind of stuff I'm, you into? I'm, where to start then? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just, I'll go, I'll go far back and then press forward from there. If awesome. that works. Yep. I was always, um, always been a gamer. It's just been a specific kind of games. So I remember sprinting home to get on my console because avoid the one hour TV rule when I was little. Um, <laughs> but I played RTS games for the longest time. What's your favorite games? What's your favorite? Oh, or what did college you... time? College time was Starcraft two when I played it the most, but obviously it started with command and conquer and with stuff way before that. Okay. So Scott has no idea what we're talking about. Ooh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is real time strategy things. Dune two and Dune. Did you play that? Yeah. The, oh those yeah, were, yeah. That's how I started <laughs> playing PC games was Dune. The original Dune RTSs, but so we're in the same. Okay, keep going. I played the game before I knew what the book was. Yes, and I'm ashamed of that fact. Me too, exactly. <laughs> That's how I got into the book was playing that game. Okay, all right. I don't feel bad, and I'm sure there's two of us. Two. Okay, there are two. Um, <laughs> I I had friends, the ho- painting hobby, and you know model kits and everything was always on the periphery of what I was interested in, but. Uh, I had friends who played games and so their focus was the gaming side of things. So naturally they played Warhammer fantasy when it was out and 40 K and stuff like that. Um, but I always thought that that was scam. I always thought like it, if I could play an RTS, I could just move my little men on the computer. I don't have to build them and paint them and put them together in order to play a game and that's the whole purpose of building and painting and doing that it's obviously not anymore right but for my group they're like well you have to do all this and then i opened a box what the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> and, um and they're all about this big right they're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's honest it's a, a little back plastic then in a even box. smaller yeah i built a model airplane when i was younger <laughs> and i remember getting to a point and just going like this is stupid you can buy toys at a <laughs> My mentality has shifted, though. Okay. Um, it's still a scam, but um, scam. <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> I probably more so of a scam than it was back then. Well, but I'm, I'm yeah. in on it now. <laughs> but it's a fun scam. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, my friend dragged me to the Baltimore Games Day, the last one they had there in the U.S. And I remember standing outside those doors and just having the like energy. Where everybody has to shout, wah! I was just, yep, just going to say, did everyone yell, wah? This guy yeah, said, what I, was, the fuck? I, yeah. I didn't know what was going on, but I loved it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I went inside, and I still had no idea what was going on. I just, they're like, oh, you can paint pennies over here. And my friend was there for the competition um, at the time. And I just kind of bounced around. I really didn't know what it was. and But that started my road in. Um, I got in, I'm going to one, two, skip it through. Yeah, oh, 40k. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get into 40k until sixth edition, um, and then I got out of it at eighth. And I skip all that time because it's a dark time. It's a competitive mm-hmm. time. I can either be like hyper competitive, or <laughs> which which nobody has fun. My opponent doesn't have fun, and I don't have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or um, it can be the switch is off. And when 40k went to eighth, I didn't want to learn a new rule set, and I had some friends who were like. Hey man, we got the better drug. Heresy is more expensive, and we have resin over here. <laughs> um, and obviously, they sucked me in because of the rules, but I stayed because of. It. I know that not every 40k scene is competitive, um, but mine was hyper mm-hmm. uh, in my local community uh, here. And playing Heresy, listen to any podcast, you show up to any event. Uh, Scott, he's talking about Horus Heresy, which is another game based in it's yeah. a it's like the prequel game kind of to what 40k is, and that's Warhammer as well. This is a okay, I'm, just all right, all right. just you know, I'll get I'll get to I'm an idiot. <laughs> we'll get there. I Don't promise. Forget, I'm a little older than 49. <laughs> um, yeah, 
poor Cersei was where it was at. And I fell in love with the people and the community, the emphasis on beautiful terrain and armies and custom kits. And then Games Workshop uh, or Forge World came out with an army called Demons of the Ruin Storm. So right now we're like just shy of 2020. Um, and what was special about that army is it only prescribed base sizes, didn't prescribe models. You could use whatever you wanted from any range um, initially, and then they quickly edited that. <laughs> and so my goal that I set for myself was to build an army that was entirely some garage kits, some third party, some board game minis, some yeah. stuff to build a cohesive force that, that was unified in theme not just having disparate models that I thought was cool, but having, um, I had a list, six item list of it has to have like rusty metal plates, teeth, open wounds, gross, cool box. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You had to have like four of the six. Yeah. Um, and that re that changed the game for me hobby wise. Cause all of a sudden I wasn't just stuck to one brand or one game. I, it opened my eyes to all these people that sculpt individual model models. Uh, and I have to credit one person specifically, if it's okay. Oh yeah. For um, sure. A guy, a guy named Cohen Terra designs on Instagram. Um, I saw him, um, sculpting Asmodan from Diablo th- two. Okay. And I just like yeah. had to, I had, I was in a six month hobby slump. I wasn't doing anything with my time. I wasn't. So, can you, know, you hold so that up again? Slump, so people, cause yeah, that's from I'll Diablo. Pictures too. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, so this is from Diablo uh, 3. Okay, yeah. Yep. I don't know if that's in focus. I can't see my own camera. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's got like... I've seen that this. before. That's awesome. He's in the middle of sculpting the butcher right now, and he's going to mm. sucker me into buying that. <laughs> <laughs> so is he, is he sell miniatures by himself, or is it 3D printing or files, or is it... The, um, this one was limited run he's like i can make 10 and then the the mold is done yeah and he made 11 and i almost bought a second one (laughs) (laughs) um and then he got into 3d printing recently um and or 3d sculpting recently and he's done he does work on both sides okay cool um he does everything from this horrible stuff to like goofy little kids bobbleheads and um it that opened my eyes to the world of that i was blind to I still want to say I'm stuck in that mindset, that GW mindset of everything else. But like, no, like that's not what this is. I, it, I, and you're not the only one I think that gets stuck in that mindset. Cause when you, it's like, once you step outside there and you just go on like just my mini factory for a minute and start kind of looking all these other companies that are doing amazing things and they're not like, I, I would think of Bisterium or creature caster and some oh. of the stuff that they do. And it's just really, really cool, original stuff that if you get stuck in that Games Workshop mindset, you miss all that other stuff when it comes to that. So I, I agree with you completely. It was in the hunt for... There's plenty of other game companies out there, too. Like, I got some of my stuff from Cool Mini or Not, um, from yeah. Promelec, from... Um, I could rifle off from Creature Caster, which is much bigger now yeah. than they were at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, and then also individuals. And the individuals is what, like, I now hunt for those models that, that people are just making for funsies because nobody else has them. And De- Demons of the Ruinstorm made me fall, into, fall in love with the unique and the limited, and I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> and I, I think you just hit on a, re- and Scott, I think, probably picked up on this, too. You hit on something that like as garage kit guys, that's how it started for us is people started making models of things that they didn't have or couldn't find a model of from movies. Cause most of our stuff is comics, movies. Uh, what else would you say is it thrown like classic horror, right? Scott, that, that kind of thing. Classic horror, superheroes, um, sci-fi. Yeah. And it started, you know. it's like an early nineties thing. And it's like, that's where I think we need to like, if we want to keep our side of it alive, cause everyone's kind of aging out of it and to see these kind of resin kits. Cause it's the same thing. And people, it's Mr. like Mr. 35, he's not aging. I, you know, I'm <laughs> aging. True. 
uh, we don't, there's not most of the, I'm like one of the youngest guys on our side of the hobby and that huh. side of the hobby, they have no idea about your side. Your side has no idea. I think a lot of times that there's this other stuff going on and it's like this whole other, if everyone could get in one big hobby love circle thing, it could, I think could grow. And we have one guy that he, uh, George Stevenson, he runs Blackheart, Blackheart, uh, what's the, his actual name? It's Blackheart Enterprises. And he's at Adepticon and he sets up, he's a guy that he was out in the hall too. And he had a lot of the Star Trek and sci-fi pumpkin head and leather face guys out there. Oh, nice. Okay. He's one of our guys that's been, he's the only one and Badger airbrushes. He's the only other guy that's been like, Hey, there's something going on over here. These guys would like our stuff too. We need to like start filtering in there and, and kind of exposing people to what we have. And I think what you hit on is just great. So keep going. Sorry. <laughs> I would, I no. I <clears throat> let me make a note because I would love to touch on that. It, there's a key point for me that falls right in, in okay. there. Okay. Okay. Um, about crossover. Um, demons of the own storm found the models. I was really unhappy with the scheme. Um, I loved the skin. I loved the gore. I loved the pox stuff, but um, I just had these like strange, out of place green armor plates, and I just didn't know a scheme to paint that was going to fit the theme. But I knew I wanted it rusty. I just had no idea how to paint rust at that time. Yeah. And since then, not just with Dirty Down, but across the, I've tried every rust product that's on the market, every new one that comes out, just because I I want to see what they do and how they function. Uh, and if they're competition, but there's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I found, I stumbled across, I'm skip, skipping too far ahead. I worked in event production for 17 years. Okay. Um, and then COVID happened. Um, and you can imagine that didn't go well at all. Um, <laughs> so I went from having, from being on call 24, seven, 365 to um, we transitioned to PPE production and Maryland had this great rollover where like any company that wants that stuff could jump into it very quickly. They'd finance it. The issue is, uh, the FDA didn't change their certification rules. So you could be making everything that people need, but you couldn't sell it. Ah. So we had to pivot third time to distribution. And at that time we went from a company of 36 down to a company of three. Ooh. Um, and I had to learn very quickly uh, how distribution worked, how uh, online retail worked, how Amazon functioned. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, that was a struggle really quickly. And even then that petered out. Once I got it set up, it was self-sustaining. So I had a lot of time on my hands to, to build and paint stuff. Um, I ended up um, painting as much as I could, as fast as I could, but I never was on Instagram or even social media a lot, but I needed, I went from doing work puzzles essentially every week um, to having nothing for my mind. And I wanted to, I looked at Instagram as like, I'm going to figure out how this works. I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful at it. I have no idea how it works. I have no idea what that realm is, but it looks fun and I have the time. Um, so I, I did the deep dive that you'd expect with the algorithm and this, that, and the other, and, and, um, you know, everything that they tell you to stay away from. Um, <laughs> um I'd like to see Jason's algorithm. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun and it kept me busy. Um, and eventually I attracted in our small hobby world, a small following um on that scale and that was will be important later with just the general springboard but skip back to armor panels i was really unhappy with armor panels wanted to paint rust and i came across a guy's instagram uh called luke mockeridge and i have to credit him with all of this because if i never came across his rust tutorial none of this would have ever happened okay um i saw what he had a picture of and i saw the three steps that were to achieve that picture and i was like mm -mm. cool <laughs> um there's no way <laughs> that couldn't happen but 
I needed a quick fix and this seemed really easy. Um, so I went and looked for his tutorial called for use of a paint called Model Mates. And I searched all over for Model Mates and I could not find it. Um, couldn't purchase it anywhere, uh, not even overseas. Um, there were no, there were a couple blog posts. There was a couple old forums. There was a, a couple like, um, just like ancient. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Scott, have you heard of Model Mates Paint? I have never. I have not. No. <clears throat> it suffered from what Dirty Down suffered previously, which is that it was not in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and I came across massive voodoo, Roman Lapotte's massive voodoo page. Okay. Um, where he uh, is a prolific painter in our space. Um, mm -hmm. And um, in the comments, he had a, a model mate tutorial. And in the comments, buried was someone saying, hey, you know, they rebranded. They're now Dirty Down. Well, I found something on Dirty Down. Eventually, I still couldn't find it. <laughs> And then I found a post on eBay, which was like, you can spend here. It's, it's 10 euro and $50 shipping. <laughs> yeah. So we're at, yep. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm that desperate. I have the time. And, um, so I, I bought one, flew it over here and then I tried it. And Luke thankfully suffered through all of my questions because I had the same questions that everyone now asks about this paint. Um, the first time they use it because it doesn't function like any other paint that you own. And I got it to work and it was exactly what he said. And I immediately bought four, 200 more dollars worth of four <laughs> pots, four paint pots for 200 bucks yeah. to fly it over here. The reason why it's so expensive is um, being dangerous goods is you have to ship it a very specific method and you need a slew of certifications in order to actually transport it safely it's not supposed to go on a plane without that so i i got it tried it <clears throat> it was amazing bought a whole bunch I, I even got one of these big boys which they sell overseas but not here okay 250 mils um and i haven't even cracked that open that's the first one that i bought <laughs> um and that's where stuff really began um i went down a rabbit hole trying to figure out how this stuff works and i, I mentioned it doesn't work like anything else out there um and that's the Instagram, the distribution, the Instagram pairing, uh, or, or s small following that I had at the time, plus the continued time to invest that COVID gave me. I know it impacted a lot of people very negatively, but it changed my life you know, for the better. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's how we started this podcast. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> that's exactly the same time frame. It hasn't changed my it life. It's made his life worse. It's made my life worse. Now you have to tolerate him every week, right? Yeah, oh, you know, my God. Yeah, twice a month. <laughs> Not to mention all the questions I get. What's wrong with him? Okay. Yeah. My, my first... <laughs> um, my first ambitions were very small. I'm a very risk-averse person. Yeah. And... um. I had a job that I was happy with, that I a career that I had been in for so long. And I was like, you know what? Maybe uh, as a side hustle, I could ship some of this over here and just sell it online, um, online retail in my spare time. Um, and then I reached out to Dirty Down. He's like, you know, you're one of probably 100 inquiries that I fielded. Um, here's this dangerous goods information to scare you away. And... Um, that dangerous goods information was essentially it costs the same to ship a hundred as it does to ship 9,000. Um, you pay for the space on the aircraft that's climate controlled and all that. <laughs> not you pay for a cubic meter, whether you use the cubic meter or not. <laughs> and oh, wow. okay. so he was like, you can't dip your toe in this. You just have to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's. Um, I talked to my wife. I was just like, she slapped you. She's like, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> no, she, well, uh, she also, she can't have a hobby that isn't for profit. <laughs> and I bought her a set of like jewelry tools and she turned it into an Etsy store. Okay. And I was just like, no, that's not what this was for. <laughs> um, and so, uh, her dad for ages 
um, their first generation immigrants for ages have been like, so when are you going to start your own company? When are you going to like, yeah. you can, can you sell this? Can you, can you paint these models and you do this for fun? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where are they from? Where are they from? Cause I'm... Uh, they're, they're from Iran. Okay. Um, gotcha. And, uh, yeah. It, and that he made his, his wife that he has it, here by the same hard work. Everything is, uh, an opportunity to, uh, have a better life. And, um, so that's awesome. It, literally the, the first time when I told him I started the company was the first time I think I heard him say, I love you for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, um <laughs> that's so it, dirty down essentially told me, put up or shut up. Yeah. Um, but it also explained because everybody's question is like, where did this stuff come from? Why wasn't it here? Why are we just hearing about it? And this is where I can get into that crossover conversation. I've been rambling. For- oh, no, that's fine. So, yeah. How did it, like, how did it start? What's it, like, what is its history? So, <sighs> Dirty Down, really, their mainstay are these things, okay. right, are the sprays. Um, and their, uh, the whole line, including the liquid effects, are used in the original Star Wars, the new Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, the list goes on. Um, and it's all for, uh, breaking down props, create, making them look like they've been through life or post-apocalypse, or it, it can be everything from sweat stains on Johnny Depp's and Pirates of Caribbean's costume to, uh, you know, the grime on R2, mm-hmm. um, to it's, it's in house of dragons. It's got, there's a rust spot. It's in the first episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, Vertigree is on the Oh my the god, door. hold on. Are you seriously? You can pick out rust spots and go, I know exactly which, which one that is, what can that is. Dirty I, Down I'm... can't get by me now. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. I spent I started out as oh, a hobbyist. Oh, ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I started you can't out have as fun a at the movies. <laughs> that's yeah, it, I mean it's exactly that. I can't tell the sprays yet, but the liquid effects. There are some hallmarks to the quick work. There are ways to use it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I, that's fine. <laughs> um, so they started in special effects, uh, or not special effects. Um, not special right effects. Down. I mean, that works as a special. Yeah. Effect. yeah. Set painting, set design, like that sort of thing. He, yeah, he put out, Alan is the owner of Dirty Down, put out a, a, an amazing guy. So kind, so generous. Um, he took a chance on a rando who just reached out one day and again said, yes, I'll do it. Um, charge me your money. <laughs> and <laughs> take my money, rather. Um, so they used those sprays to great effect. It's, um, it does some really cool things for props, and it also does some really cool things for us. Um, the liquid effects, he, st- he had these effects that are based you know, you'll use the liquid, you'll use the spray, and you'll notice they, they smell the same. So there's crossover between it um, on a chemical on the chemical side of things. But um, he branched out and had the line Model Mates. And it's not because that line wasn't successful that he stopped. Model Mates is um, shtick. Europe expects something different from Model Mates, from Dirty Down, than the U.S. does. Um, you can blame me for that. But <laughs> Europe expects water-soluble. And that's what Model Mates was, a line of water-soluble effect paints that it wasn't that this gives the gradient of rust in a single coat. That's just an added bonus. They, have a, they had 10 paints in total that were water-soluble, so it black, oil brown, um, meant to be used by scale modelers, model trains. and what, Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that and, was my first initial thought is like, this is like the best military rust stuff. Like, I, like why aren't people using this all the time? And that's, yeah, that's where it got its start. Um, uh, scale model trains and um, scale modeling and, and historical war, war gaming. Yeah. And he only closed up shop on model mates because the sprays were doing so well and the movie industry buys in pallets. Gotcha. Um, to sell the liquid effects just became a pain. And so he consolidated it down to three, rolled it into the Dirty Down brand, and then just said, like, this is. These are the ones, the rust, the vertigree, and moss have an application in the movie industry. They're the most used. We don't need the other. And, uh, and then I came along and poked the bear. <laughs> um, yeah. So you mentioned crossover earlier. Mm-hmm. And 
there's a whole rabbit hole to go down. Um, but it's amazing to see what it's all the hobby, but what other hobbies have to offer. You said like the war gamers didn't know about um, techniques that garage kit guys are doing. And yeah, and, and the model train guys have been doing this for ages. <laughs> they know how to do everything. And if you look at the stuff they create, it's gorgeous. Model train guys are <laughs> nuts. <laughs> we have a guy that watches this show and he'll, he's like, he'll build stuff. And I'm like, dude, what are you like? The, the, just layouts of stuff. Like the stuff that goes into a train layout, you can't like as a, as a hobbyist and as a modeler, no matter what you do, if you can't appreciate a good train layout, like there's something wrong with you. Like there is so much great stuff in a really good train layout that you're just like, damn, that's, that's hobby. That's fantastic. And people mm-hmm. need to appreciate it more. I think the train guys get overlooked by us a lot and by the miniature guys, because there's, it's train guys. There's not many of them left either. They're aging out of it too. And no one's picking that up, which is the sad part of all, a lot of them. You guys have any experience on that side of things personally? I, we're model guys. Like I've built models as a kid. Scott, he's an old, how'd you start Scott? Oh. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> go do, you know what to yourself. Um, <laughs> I've been told I swear too much on this show. Well, we're about to start uncle. getting ding. That's the thing. I think we're going to start hey, getting good ding yourself. Oh, right, so, right, um, use that word. <laughs> I had an uncle that was into trains and, but he never finished. He had this huge layout in his basement. And if he would have ever finished it, it would have been beautiful, you know, but he had all the mountains, he had all the track in. Okay. And I used to go down there and just marvel at just, you know, he'd build a lot of the HO buildings and stuff like that, but he never really finished the landscaping or anything like that, but he would buy, um, and this is something you don't see that often anymore. He'd buy these brass engines. Okay. Oh, I guess the brass had the better detail, just like, you know, the hobby etched uh, or the is it, uh, photo it? etched, the photo, photo etched stuff. Yeah. And so these brass engines were like hundreds of dollars. And then they just paint over them, you know. But I remember he had all these unboxed, <laughs> these boxed, must run in the family, these boxed brass engines and stuff. So I had a little knowledge as far as the scales and stuff like that. And and I used to marvel at some of that stuff because um, he always had model. Oh, what was a model railroader? Yeah. Magazine. Was, yep. And I remember even, even though I started out painting the Aurora monsters and stuff back in the day, looking at some of that stuff going, Oh my God, that's amazing. And it just, that's just as a kid, you know, it, it, it's so I know like in the hobby store window, like when you see the people, just, like when you see just a muddy tank and it looks mm-hmm. like yeah. real mud and it looks like real rust and you're just like, Holy crap. Yeah. Like even at museum, like we have the museum of science and industry here in Chicago that has, these they have those those dollhouse things that are pretty crazy but then they have this giant train layout that's basically downtown the loop in chicago it's like every building and all this really cool stuff and yeah that's well, what, see, i haven't I, been there for years so that's still, what it is now huh? yeah it's still there yeah okay there's so much uh wisdom and knowledge that's just built up over ages and been passed through the community and um I feel like that's what a lot of the progress of the the big hobby is moving towards as a unification, a consolidation of that knowledge across individual Mm -hmm. micro hobbies. And it's so awesome to see. It it has to, it it really has to. Otherwise it's going to go away for the majority of people. We went to that hobby expo. Um, What was that? It was the world figure uh, world figure. What is that? Oh crap! Here's where we both have strokes. It's it's the <laughs> it's the figure show around. They only they do it in a country once, like they spread it out. And it was here in Chicago a couple of years ago. I think it was in Sweden this past year, or huh. Netherlands. Maybe yeah, I don't remember. Netherlands. Yeah, but it was like it's like Adepticon level ridiculous. Wow, paint stuff and a lot of the guys from Europe flew in, and you the work you'd see there is just just yeah. I mean, and, I was and a lot of it's military too. It wasn't yeah. like. The loot stuff. Yeah. Oof. Oh no, it was military or um, military and fantasy. historical. Yeah. Uh, and then you also had fantasy uh, figures, but the variety was just 
amazing to me. Yeah. And then the techniques are totally different. They're the same, but yeah. they're different. And it's that's that's where George went and got his ideas to go smaller because george was yeah. selling one-to-one scale heads yeah he's, he's the guy that has the giant frankensteins and, and godzillas that are there and it. it's, it's like when he saw that he's like oh no <laughs> but he always <laughs> kind of had that idea too because back in the day in the 90s he had the micromania yeah, he had the micro- ones he did have some micromania miniature is, stuff yes but it's it's weird i just want and that's why i, I, I was really happy that you agreed to come on to kind of get some of our guys to see it and maybe some guys that might follow you might see some of this and go hey they wait you can buy a dracula <laughs> or you can buy like a godzilla <laughs> like that they might not even know so that this is great so back to the paint oh no i i was just or, thinking about what you're oh, saying no. is is i'm i'm slowly um in the demon stuff i've reached out to a lot of sculptors and while i haven't painted like a, a life-size thing yet uh my projects are slowly getting bigger and bigger i have like this guy back here and yeah. I, I expected him to be like yay big but he's like this big and i'm like i haven't painted something this big before you, I oh, got, see, like, you're gonna uh, end up where we are it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah well there's there's so something so fun about when you're working on a small surface yeah nice <laughs> he's got gossamer there you <laughs> hold go hold on hold on <laughs> go get, get the big show guy us. down yeah, show us yeah there you go <laughs> oh, oh i have that I haven't yeah. done it yet, though. I have that. <laughs> uh, he's he's only about a third done. Yeah, mine's but... sitting over there unpainted. Yeah, yeah. It's like a the... pool toy. That thing's so stupidly big. Pool <laughs> toy. This is big. I cut off its head and replaced yeah. it. <laughs> um, there's something when you paint on a small scale, it can be forgiving because there's like you know you're playing with them three feet rules. Like you don't really care. Yeah. Uh, what it looks like from across the room you only care what it looks like while you're playing the game and right. you're not going to like inspect it close up um but there's something special about the blends you can get on larger surfaces and the realism that you can bring and incorporate with like small glazing layers building up from like undercoats of veins and everything and what that looks like i'm a sucker for large models now i can't go back to the 28 millimeter 32 millimeter which is what the war gaming stuff is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm currently I'm working on Snake Eyes, <laughs> right there. Yeah. From GI Joe, so there's that. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. What is this like year two on that? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure I have a whole slew of projects around yeah. here that are. <laughs> oh, I mean, this I just, takes up all my Mark, time. Mark, I now. knock them out. Oh yeah. He hasn't painted a kit in 40 years, so don't even believe him. <laughs> don't even believe him. <laughs> well, when he starts one, it'll be done in a few <laughs> That's days. Right. That's right. Well, I was waiting for Dirty Down. Now that oh, I got yeah. Dirty Down, yeah. we got now I know where to get Dirty Down. I'm in. Okay, I'm down and dirty. There you go. I like that's a great circle back. I appreciate down it. and dirty to Dirty <laughs> Down. Oh, it's clean up, so it's Dirty Down. Dirty that's Down. Where okay. Came from. Um, really? Wait, that's it? Yes. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the colloquialism. That is pretty cool. Um, I, I was wondering why it was okay. <laughs> um. Bringing us back to Dirty Down, I ma- took that leap. Um, I said, you know what? I'm going to take the hit financially because I want to see if this is a thing. I'll order a small amount, pay the ridiculous shipping, and try it out. Um, the first batch I just sold through Instagram to people who had been following my progress and seeing what it was capable of and didn't want to pay the $50 to get it from overseas. Um, and that batch that I flew in uh, sold out in a day. Um, <laughs> and you were smart i was gonna say. i brought i brought in 100 it sold out in a day i brought in 900 it sold out in three i brought in six thousand. it sold out uh in three weeks <laughs> and, nice. and then it began okay. <laughs> then it truly began um i think i can make a living at this <laughs> <laughs> i went oh no what have i done and i i remember i've been with my my old boss since out of high school um, at two, I started two years after he started his company. We helped grow it from a single car garage to a 40,000 square foot warehouse space. And like my life was work for all intents and purposes. <laughs> yeah. And I remember sitting on my deck with my head down going, oh, this got, it's got way bigger than I thought I was going to. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, this is my three months notice on six months notice on three months notice. 
I will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the most I can possibly give. It, it was successful. And it was successful because there's a huge challenge. It's amazing just by itself. I have the benefit of having the opportunity to work with it ahead of time, experiment with it ahead of time, decide like, okay, this is something I want to do, and then come into it knowing how it functions and help. I never want somebody to go through the growing pains that I went through trying to figure out how and why Dirty Down does what it does. Okay. Um, and because if you just pick up a pot, I've been, I've probably been accused of scamming people <laughs> roughly 50 times. <laughs> and those are just the mean emails. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then probably another 200 of like, Hey, this isn't working. Am I doing something wrong? Um, and it's my favorite thing in the world to take those people from, I hate you to, <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody about this. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, Scott has a lot of people that say they hate him. So he, he's <laughs> that side of it. I haven't been shot at, <laughs> but I, I can't I credit. Have, I have. Doesn't surprise. Oh me. no. <laughs> He's, he's they weren't shooting at, at me. They were, they I can tell you that. They weren't shooting at me. They were shooting in our direction. During It was New Year's downtown. I think that's called being couple. shot at. Oh, yeah. That's just shot at. <laughs> but it at. wasn't like I'm killing that guy. I'm shooting in that direction. Does it matter if it's indiscriminate or well, targeted? it's not shot at me. It's shot at. Okay. <laughs> the end result is the same, I think. True. Is this. It's run for your yeah. life. <laughs> Um, I, Sorry. I have, I have to hear the end of that. No, I have to no, hear that the end was of that, a, that story was two different. Buddy. That was two different. I can tell that story real quick. Um, <laughs> okay. anyway. So how, wh- how did you get linked up with Scott? How did those two oh, lives come how together? Did, oh, God. <laughs> I were getting interviewed. How did we? Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. And he grew up close to where I grew up. And we would always like see each other at the Wonderfest in Louisville. Our convention called Wonderfest. That's the right. big convention and for garage kids. So we'd Louisville. always say, hey, man, we, we need to get together or whatever. Because, you know, we were like from the same area. But, you know, he was all, when I first met him, he had hair down to here. The hair was longer than the beard right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, now, you know, now that I know him longer, I realize he was trying to hide the male pattern ba- baldness that runs in his family. But um, he had a depth con, which I got a haircut and, first. And then he, um, you did have longer hair last time. So I don't know. Then we started to hang out more and uh, discovered we had more in common. Yeah. You know, oh, we fight a lot. Oh, we, okay. yeah. It's because he's an idiot. All right. But. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Tell him what you did. You know, I haven't even touched on the fact that, oh, there's a thunderstorm rolling in. Let's leave my umbrella open on my I table. Forgot. I forgot. Mean, that was an accident. I forgot. Much. I shattered okay. my cough, my patio table last week because I forgot to take oh. my umbrella out. Oh, I, no. but I just forgot. I haven't even touched on that one. <laughs> okay. That was dumb. He's, that was dumb. He's, he's been in the hospital twice with burns for doing stupid shit. Okay. No, Lit once. Uh, no, no. The second of, time I did it myself. I, I I did the hospital stuff myself. Well, how many, oh, how many sparklers? Literally, the second time I burned myself intentionally. Yeah, what, what was, <laughs> no, I, mean, I, 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 I I healed my wounds myself. I didn't need to go back because uh, I had stuff left over from the first time. From the first time when he stuck his arm in plaster have, to mold, make a mold of his arm. I have the same problem with my dog. Is he keeps on tearing his paw pads and burning them over and over again. The second That's not, time was. I hear bad things about arm and plaster. Like twelve packs of what, what were the burns on your on the iron the firemen get to come get you out that of was it. the plaster oh. that was the sheetrock <laughs> chemical burns on my <laughs> yeah. i had i had chicago firemen had to cut me out of my tube we've told this story on here before we can't okay. <laughs> that's all right sorry. the other one I'm is sorry uh, i distracted no 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 it's okay <laughs> oh, that's all and right. the other one was 24 packs of sparklers at once, at once. Yeah, and i just thought it would i just thought it would be <laughs> No, I just had to tell my daughter you can't burn yourself with sparklers. Oh, they're the worst. I guess I, guess well, you I can need to if revise you put enough of them statement. together. Yeah. <laughs> tell her do not combine the strength of the sparklers. It's the you worst can thing. if you're you're drastically irresponsible. <laughs> and wasted. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
It was the most blinding flash of white light I have ever seen in my life. Oh, and it just went phosphor for you. Mm. Just flash banged yourself. And I, I did. And I was like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. (laughs) I can't see. I still need to hold on. (laughs) Stuck my hand in a cooler. I'm like, all right, I gotta go home and get the silver dine, silver dine. And I have blisters. I, I lanced my own. Anyway, sorry. Shooting. Oh, it's okay. This is entertaining. I like it. um, Good. Yeah, I don't know how. Uh, he came over one time. I would do molding and casting. Yeah, uh, resin. Yeah, and he came over to see that process one time. You had just got your rotocaster, I think, and I was like, "Oh, I want to see." Or no? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I was part of it. Yeah. So um, he brought over this real nice gal he was dating, and uh... <laughs> she's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we just started doing things running the hobby stores running the local shows still hanging out at wonderfest and what's funny is we'll go down a little bit we don't even drive together because if i had to be in a car with him for five hours so oh then you know what else when it started when we went down we had a mutual friend who had a birthday party it was a surprise party down in louisville and we decided to drive down there together to surprise him. Yeah. And I think from that point on, we kind of, because, you know, then you're in a car with someone. And suffer through that. Yeah. And, and suffer through that and say, well, now I'm invested. So. <laughs> he wouldn't let me sleep with him. Around. We had to get a separate room. Because <laughs> I no, you got a separate. I warned you. I you would wake up tied up at that point. It's just not worth it. <laughs> Again? <laughs> When we're done, I'll tell you another story. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So because we've told that, that story before too. <laughs> that's kind of how we uh, met. But it's um, and then we started doing this because we uh, got it. Same thing, like kind of like COVID, and we were trying to run a model contest, and that kind of failed. Because and... I had nothing better to do with my time than this. Well, see, Scott, I'm the painter, hobbyist guy. Scott is a collector more than anything. So like, I combine painted. the two together. You, yes. But I want a history. Like he can remember who sculpted what, what year it came out, like that kind of thing, and and say this is that kid. So he's like, he's got that that I don't have. Where I'm, my, my I mean that it, it's that kind of knowledge, that crossover that mm. um, we're able to take from from different people and different groups, and that's really what helped Dirty Down get to where it is now. Um, is people coming together from from different knowledges uh different different knowledge bases and Mm -hmm. i would never be here doing this if not for a slew of people who were just as enthusiastic from different walks of life from different hobbies helping champion and introduce a product to a nation um to multiple nations um and there's there's probably a thousand people that we could talk about, and I want to thank you for for having me on. Oh, you're absolutely. Um, well. Thank you for yeah. Let's see what happens to your sales after. Before <laughs> Wait till you edit, and then you'll be like, oh, those guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, do. but it, it, helping spread awareness because that's really what yeah. like I I I am still working on getting information out there, and there were a couple people who really early on, you know, we had to all these different groups have these rules, right? That, that kind of prohibit. We know. Um, <laughs> well, we know. Oh, we know. They prohibit in interesting ways, spreading word of something new like that of going, Hey, here's something cool. I just happen to be the one that sells it. So I'm interested, but I'm interested in advocacy as a hobbyist, to show you what this did. Um, and my buddy Mavericks paint, and his friends, Mav- Maverick of Mavericks Paint, his friends. He was the guy with me at the. Um, yeah. I have to credit towards the first spread because um, we went to Facebook groups, and I'm not allowed to say, "Hey, go buy it here," <laughs> but I can post a tutorial, and him and his friends can ask where to buy it, and then I can respond to them. <laughs> and... Work in the game, work the system. That's it. hey, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. So, um. But it was all in the name of of just like, look, you need to know about this. It is revolutionary from the model train industry to wargaming. And like, how do all these people not know about this amazing uh, product, but also skills and also 
things from from cross hobbies there's so many things out there and that's what i think is changing the fastest now in the hobby is is knowledge is spreading so fast from groups in 40k and wargaming a few years ago nobody or only a niche group had ever used enamels yeah. last year nobody had touched oils um or and airbrushing was reserved for a small niche exclusive group that's what and i now, wanted to talk airbrushing is is a big thing too for us airbrushing has always been there and so when i talk when i when i watch or read like miniature painting forums airbrushing is new and they're just trying to get into it and trying to figure out airbrushing and i'm like oh my gosh we've been doing this forever and it's weird how it it's like that it's th- things start at different times and come in at different levels i just it, it's crazy well i think something you know, i never thought of that, and now that mark's touched on it you know if you look at all these hobbies yeah there were plastic model kits but when you look at the train guys and the train guys were probably the first ones doing ultra realistic stuff so you wonder then how many of the military modelers and stuff then picked up from that you know but again it's so it's kind of and then i think a lot of stuff that we do has picked up from that Mm -hmm. i think you know and all and then you have the miniature painting which is different than what we do but there are a lot of the same techniques only they're done differently yeah um you know so it's yeah there's a lot of crossover that you, you know, I I never thought about it before, but we probably owe a lot to those model railroader guys. I think so. Uh, I think so. Because like realistic water and stuff like that. I mean, oh yeah, somebody came <laughs> up to something that said, "Hey, we got to make water look real," you know. <laughs> and same with the military modelers. You know, when I see a battleship in water, you know, and you see the white, you know, and and how they do that, how they have, you know, and I I saw a submarine one time. It's got the submarine surfacing yes. and the water pouring out of the portholes and, and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> it's so cool. You know, and it, it's, we're in a group. I'm in a group. What is it? Weathered models? Yeah. Weather. You've got to be in, if you, you've seen weathered models, right? On Facebook? <laughs> okay. That's probably, I was going to say, you've got to be in there with this stuff. <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah. uh, that's amazing. So it, it's a lot of crossover. Now I'm going to ask some dumb questions here. Hit me with okay. it. Okay. Because a couple Wait, times you've chasing. alluded to how this works, how, how your product works, and, and how. So I'm a dummy. I've never seen your product before. I, I I've, don't told, I've purposely not said anything to Scott about it. No, I love and, it. And I, I love and it. And I don't know even what your product does. So start me stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. Start me, Jason. No, no, no. We're leaving that. Oh, and uh, start me, Jason. <laughs> and, and, you know. I mean, starting from the beginning. Okay, what does your product do, and how does it work? You know, and because I noticed you said you've got spray and you've got um, liquid, and what's the difference, and what does it do, and you know, let fill me in. And I'll be able to put up pictures as we I'm go. An like, so, I'm, I'm an I'll, idiot. I'll send you pictures. Yeah. Um, the the shortest version is mm-hmm. if it's good enough for Disney, it's good enough for us. Um. And that's where you get the crossover between special effects and realism. Does it read well on screen? Is it okay for Star Wars? Are people going to believe that this product builds an environment or adds to an environment in a realistic way? Um, And going directly from what you mentioned about bringing stuff into... I tell stories by telling stories, and I obviously can't actually answer this directly. Um, The 40K and 30K community... um, Games workshop. I, I have to stop you right there. There's a yeah. lot of people that have no idea what that is, and we've said it a bunch of times. Could you just okay. say what 40k? And there's people watching this like, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, what is? Yeah. That? Okay. <laughs> so the Warhammer is a a war game that you can play like Axis and Allies, like chess, like whatever, but on a four by six table where you build and paint pla- paint plastic miniatures. They have rules associated with them, and that plays out on a large, small scale, on something like a squad-based game, or on a um, what they call Apocalypse, which is like Titans three feet tall that uh, you place on the table that battle along with Space Marines that are an inch tall. Yeah. Um, and Perfect. That's uh, a, that's perfect. 
people, I think many are introduced to Warhammer, no matter what iteration that you're playing, and a lot of war games through the game aspect. And hobby comes second for them initially. Um, and what I mean by that is backed up by Games Workshops, the company that makes Warhammer's painting style, which is very much a, a I'll just paint by numbers. Um, if you have a scheme, they have an app that tells you what paints to put in what order on your model and how to apply those, whether it's mm-hmm. base, layer, dry brush, shade, whatever. Their, their basic scheme is, yeah, base, shade, layer, highlight. Done. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can skip the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and um, then once people are in the game for a long time, they discover a love for making their army their own and making it unique and having something uh, that they can present to others, not just to play with plastic models that are built um, or primed, but to also um, take ownership of... That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, no, ownership take, pride, pr- take pride. Take yeah. pride in, in what they put on the table. Um, and that's what I found in Heresy and what many others find elsewhere. Um, that Heresy is 30k. It's Warhammer. It's just another version of Warhammer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in that, in the discovery of oils and enamels and stuff like Dirty Down, um, there's been a reach, I think recently, but there's been a reach for that ultra realism that you saw in um scale modeling in um, model trains and because of that you have companies that uh, a little while ago you had ak interactive and ammo mig um have a surge in their enamels because the grim dark it, in warhammer the grim darkness of the far future is their tagline yep. but that wasn't reflected on the tabletop and the models you're playing with but then a whole style of painting uh, had a, a surge of just dubbed grimdark, desaturated colors, um, realistic grime and grit, and the mud that you referred to earlier, the mm-hmm. water effects that you retur- referred to earlier. Um, and there's a major challenge in using new products, in using non-water-based acrylics, which all of Warhammer is painters are used to, and um, like airbrush there's a fear associated with that too if you go from finger painting to the precision of an airbrush like that's a big step for a lot of people it was for me um and there are multiple steps to achieve something that realistic so some people go like well i'm just gonna put some grit on it dry brush it with a bright orange and call that rust and that's cool that's a step towards realism um but there's an easier way to achieve that realistic, that hyper-realistic result and that can take a beginner to Disney special effects level in just a wash. That's what Dirty Down is. Um, there's, they started off with the three products, Moss, Rust, and Verdigris. Um, and it's an alcohol-based, water-soluble paint. Um, that creates a gradient of color in just that single application. You can use it to paint at competition levels, like Roman Lapot. Um, you can paint something that I won't be able, I can look at the Iron Throne in Game of Thrones and say, that's got dirty down rust on it. But you can paint in a way with this that isn't that, that you, no one will be able to tell that you use this product. But the most common way is just to wash it onto a surface. And because it's water soluble, you can then use water to manipulate and remove it, uh, reactivate it, change it to get the perfect result. And if you hate it, you can take it all away. Like enamels and oils, you aren't going to work on a project and then be stuck with the result because you didn't move fast enough. If you get afraid of progress or you get pulled away and a 12 hours passes, you can or 24 hours passes, you can still come back and manipulate Dirty Down. You can do that forever um, until you seal it in. And... Um, Right what do you seal it with? Just real quick, because someone might go, oh, what do you seal it with right here? I have my personal preference. Okay. 
there's uh, I'll give you my personal preference, and then we'll go from there. I use AK High Compatibility Thinner, which is an alcohol-based thinner that works with solvent, uh, solvent-based paints as well. Go figure. Um, or uh, an acrylic-based paints as well. It's supposedly does that. I mix that thinner 50-50 with uh, Vallejo satin and do it in fine layers through an airbrush. Okay. That's my preference. But all that matters in everything I just said is fine layers. <laughs> um, you cannot, it's water activated. You can't brush on a, a lacquer or a varnish and expect dirty down to be the way it is. It'll reactivate. The lacquer will seal it or it's already, it's finished shifting color. And you'll go from this beautiful, realistic rust to a dark, dull, um, unimpressive black brown wash. Um, I'll just speak about the rust specifically. Yeah. Um, it sounds you like you've learned that the hard way. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and I've walked a bunch of people through it as well. Um, rattle cans are the same. Rattle cans dump a ton of varnish. You can do it. You just got to be a lot farther away. Yeah, normally, rattle cans are like 12 to 18 inches. Go three feet. Go three feet back. Find mists, let it let it cure, go over it again, okay. and you're fine. But <clears throat> there's a misdirection there, and that is you don't need to varnish it at all. Corrosion is the last step on anything that you're going to do. Um, you may go in and put some like scrapes or metal, uh, dry brush or something like that. Uh, but you can do that on top of Dirty Down, no problem. You're not going to put a heavy layer of, of paint over top of it. Your rust is going to be your last thing. And it holds up just fine, too. If it's, if it's okay for wargaming and, like, picking up models, and I've got cases worth of demons back here that attest to that, <laughs> then it's going to be fine for any sort of display and any manipulation. I, I challenged people at the booth because I had plenty of people that were like, oh, but what about varnish? And I painted it on. Did a test. I'm like, now try and screw that up with your finger without licking it, <laughs> <laughs> which I hope you don't do to your models yeah. anyways. Um, Jason is a model licker. <laughs> Rust has, it innately has different textures, different colors from deep orangey browns or reddish browns all the way up through bright yellows or even like a, a tinted white, depending on the yeah. rust and nastiness you're looking at. Um, and this in just a wash and maybe a little water mixed into it too, you're able to get that full gradient of color that you expect from rust in an ultra matte. And when I say ultra matte, I mean like uh, if you put this paint next to most of the other paints you have, it your other paints will now look like satin, just as rust is ultra textured, ultra matte. Um, and you get a little bit of texture with dirty down as well. Um, it that that's what I was going to ask. Like, I'm looking at a. Um, I took them from I, your Insta from the website. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to say it's like a hatch door, but I, you know, I don't know what it is. But yeah, it, this stuff just it, it's amazing, and that's just painted over a solid color and kind of manipulated. Or so is it the uh, the armor plate? Um, there are a, a few different examples um on on my instagram at gobble underscore inz okay what's the website if i could ask goblins you know, hut i've told you a hundred times goblins hut .com. There you go. um and we are uh we're the north american distributors as jason said early on but we also sell online retail um and uh don't buy from us i mean if you're desperate but go to your friendly local game store go to your local hobby shop Tell them to reach out to us instead. Support that shop and it being there and existing. Um, and uh, take care of them. They provide a, a lot for you. And um, we will happily sell to them. I, if you order from me, I'm packing up the boxes myself. I can still offer the same level of customer service for the store and for you, whether you buy uh, at either place. But um, to talk about those pictures on our website, the first one there is the yellow rust. That's the new one, and you can see the texture that it provides. Um, but yes, that's just a single wash of the, everything that's on there is just a single wash. Those are all very basic applications with the exception. I think there's an example of stippling, uh, as well, but no matter what technique that you use, you're going to get that range of color, that realistic range of color that you expect. Yeah. Like I'm um, looking at the one that's got like a door and some pipes. On the oh side yeah. Or, 
Yeah. Now, that's, wow, that that's amazing. <laughs> that's that's probably one of the most complex projects that I have. The pipes are pure dirty down in two different applications. Um, I put a mixed wash on there, but also a direct application. Um, if you use dirty down straight out of the bottle, it's going to be um, that reddish brown all the way through like a, a brownish orange. So like a, a higher um, desaturated orange. Um, if you then apply, if you apply water to the dirty down while it's wet, it'll push you up to that bright orange and yellow. If you apply water to the dirty down after it dries, you'll get an extreme shift to bright yellow very quickly. Um, so you can go in where like panel line almost where you'll have like water, where water pools and, um, get that to shift really bright and you have a level of control over it where you can, um, once you know how to manipulate the range of color, all of a sudden you can achieve whatever effect you want. You can let it do its thing naturally just by washing it over, or you can go and be precise and say in this spot around this pipe, I want to have like a, where this fitting is, I want to have a bright orange or a bright yellow. And uh, with more layers of dirty down, the darker it gets till you get to like deep, deep browns. Um, those rich colors that, that would expect from like a sewer lid that's just been sitting there for ages. And right. My other, so I'm an, I'm an art teacher and I have, my degree is in sculpture and it's a lot of the stuff that I did for my degree is I did, I used a lot of the, hold on, sophisticated finish stuff. And we don't have to put this in because I don't want to give them. So it, it look, looks like that and you get it at like Michael's or Dick okay. Blake and all that kind of stuff, but it has actual metal in there. Yeah. And then you have to use like vinegar or their patina solutions to get it to do what your stuff does with just water. And that's when I think, am I correct? That's kind of. Yeah. And, and no, to be clear, I don't, like you had mentioned, we don't have to put this in. No, I, I am happy to talk the merits of dirty down over okay. any rust product on the market. That's what I, perfect. Um, that's what I kind of wanted you to do because I use, when I do my, when I was patinating all my stuff, the stuff smells terrible. And then I did a Nautilus a few years back, Scott, you'll remember. And I used this specific rust stuff that smells, where the hell is that stuff? I think I probably threw it out. It smells so bad. He was that I couldn't it. even. Oh, what the hell is that? Yeah. I mean, I have rust pigments. I have enamels. I yeah. have acrylic rust. I have like, it, uh, I got army painter, AK ammo. This, um, or no, that's not it. The whole thing because i wanted to be now i didn't want to approach somebody and just say you know this is better than what you have i want to be able to say you know if you use one of those real rust products uh like you rust from ammo mig or um the sophisticated finish right those products continue to shift they're real rust they continue to shift color over time right i've had people who have approached me saying you know i did this ancient rotted gundam diorama and it looked beautiful when i had it but two years later, it's all shifted to dark brown. Yeah. And, um, and and I think knowing that, because that's one of the problems with some of my sculptures that I've done, is they have changed. So the one changed to just pure red brown, the entire thing. Yeah. And when yeah. I first started out on it, it had all these really cool highlights and different colors and different, t like, it looked amazing. And now it just looks like brown rust. It looks like just, and with this, if I had this at the time, it would be a different story. And it, that's kind of what I want to do. So, just... so I, I'm looking at an example and because um, I'm exploring the website while we're talking. Yeah. And it's um, basically the same shot four times. So it's a sword or an axe or something where you see the guy's foot and the hand on the handle. I don't know if you know the one I'm talking about. I do. Right yeah. So that it starts off post. just a, a real <laughs> brown and then it lightens up and then it lightens up a little more and then it kind of like there was a wash over it and looks really cool so yeah it, it, so that's a that's a more so you can just wash it on um right. but that's a more uh sophisticated approach and that is luke mockridge's tutorial okay. um ah, okay that is so we've talked about how dirty down shifts color um with mm. water um that will go all the way up to a very bright, bright color. Um, what you can do is mix 
Um, this is my go-to, but any orangey brown wash. This is Vallejo Rust Wash. And what that does is it acts as a ceiling to the color shift. So, um, and as you layer it on, you get more pigment. And when you put wet on Dirty Down, it wants to shift brighter. But again, every subsequent layer that you're putting on has the ceiling on it. So you yeah. sacrifice. When you mix this, you can mix it, mix it with ISO, mineral spirits, water, whatever. You can pre-mix it or apply it all afterwards. What you're going to do is, is similar with all of those things. Um, you're going to sacrifice Dirty Down's range and color, the full range that you can achieve from deep red browns to the bright oranges and whatever. And you're going to get a uniform pigment that settles around every detail beautifully. Um, and that can be rivets, that can be um, panel lines, that can be, you know, whatever. In this case, in the sword, it's settling into all the texture that is on that 3D print, um, which worked to my advantage. And then the last step, the difference between the third and the, and the last is just a dry brush of metallic black. Uh, the real rust heads will tell you, you know, that's not how rust works. It's not, you're, you know, you're going to have a matte finish over the whole thing. Um, but I feel like, and with all these products, there's a way to help with this. I feel like it helps it read as rust. Right. To How's this going to, exactly. It's totally what it does. It's, yeah. Versus, uh, you know, too much nutmeg or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, that's, on a similar vein, the vertigree to help it read as vertigree, um, you know, wherever anybody touches a statue, uh, it, it's going to rub off and rub off some of that oxidization, uh, patina, um, and you'll get down to that brass and copper underneath or copper underneath and reveal that shiny metal. And um, thankfully, you get the full range of vertigree from aquamarine to teal. Um, I don't know those colors as well. <laughs> <laughs> But you can go in with a Q-tip, what with water, and just rub off yeah. where anybody would have touched it, on like the foot or the crotch of the statue, or the boob. that's where I'm rubbing. That's my favorite part of every statue. <laughs> that's where all the ones in real life are rubbed off. And a lot are all the way down. I've never seen resin wear down before. <laughs> um, um, and the sprays the same way. Can you can kind of wipe them with water? Oh, and or. So and that's a jump ahead, but I was just kind of no, no, my thank brain, you. the way my brain works. Shifting gears. Um, the sprays are water soluble. Like I said, Europe expects water soluble. Down. The sprays are not going to have that range of color that you get from liquid effect. But what they're going to do is provide this griminess. I, I just painted one today. Um, I'll put this up so people can see. Um, provide some all griminess. So this is just a base coat of um, sea foam, and then I don't know if that's in focus, but yeah, all of yeah, the just... the other color on that is just like a a gritty grime that is um, built up in every crevice of the tile. And that's um, just so, with the spray. Yeah, I mean this is okay. primer, and okay. this is the liquid effect rust. But all of the the dusting that's okay. on there, it comes from you dump an application on. Um, and then you take a wet paper towel or a seafoam sponge or, and you can do this on large scale stuff. I've got a stormtrooper helmet with like streaks down the side of its face. My and, sponge um, drawer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can create yeah. really great it's... textures. Um, Scott doesn't paper. have a sponge drawer. I have a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> you have a sponge brain. I have a sponge brain. That's true. <laughs> I have a pile of in the garage. Of just <laughs> What can I do with this today? Yes. Well, um, and I, I'm looking at your USA, uh, shops here and uh surprisingly the only illinois shop i found is red raccoon games down in bloomington illinois yes i was i know where that place that's a kick-ass hobby shop game shop actually i've never been and i can tell you that's where i went to college um, that's where that's down there since adepticon um everybody went home and told their local people about this stuff okay and I've gotten more wholesale inquiries in the, since Adepticon than I have in the past like six months. So cool. that website list isn't up to date, and there are many more Illinois stores now uh, coming. <laughs> All right, let me. I, I bet Grognard's one of them. Is Grognard? Yes. Yep, oh, okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> yep. Um, I wish I had the the full list. Uh, well, we'll link you. to all that too. If people can check out the the list of uh stores and where they're at and near their area. And again, if there isn't one, buy it. Then go ahead, talk to Goblin's Hut. But yeah, I I like that you. 
push and go to the hobby store first because those are going to be extinct too. I mean, I want Mark ah. to box mine if I buy something. I, I, I want Mark <laughs> to box it. Oh, it'll be me. Yep. You know, I, maybe I can script my daughter into it. See what happens. She makes the boxes, and then yeah. That's I can awesome. have her put a drawing on it. That's Aww. mostly what she does. <laughs> yeah, take it. Try have her draw him. Wouldn't be the first drawing I got. <laughs> he got some. He gets some okay. good ones actually. <laughs> I've gotten some good. Uh... Oh no! <laughs> so one of our good good friends, who's a sculptor, who sculpts for Disney. Well, he used to sculpt for Disney. Oh, now wow. he does a bunch okay. of a toy stuff. He'll send him pictures on the boxes, and they're it's a real jerk. <laughs> they're <movie>. great. <laughs> Just a mess with you. They're, yes, they're great. <laughs> I like Ragna the best. Your, your what is it? Your grandmother? Right, I don't have Ragna. Oh, you don't have Ragna up here. Um, <laughs> so I had just gotten this puppy, and uh, he sends me. Oh, that. Okay. <laughs> He's such a jerk. No. Um, oh man, I do want our guys. Please try this stuff out. There are and girls. There are some really cool stuff I think that we can do in the garage kit side of things, especially for. A lot of basing stuff. Um, the sprays, I was really thinking, like, when you're doing, like, a rock base or you're doing something, spray that down, wipe it off. Because we've a lot of times used, like, gel medium mixed with pigment, mixed with paint, and then wiped off to fill in cracks and stuff. And this wouldn't obstruct as much of the detail, I think. So I think this might be a better way of doing that. Because I bought, I got my can at the show, so I'm going to give it a try. And I purposely nice. haven't tried it yet because I wanted to have this interview first. And then go, and I, I have my bases ready, and I'm going to shoot a quick thing for, for our people, too. Um, the one thing I did read is that temperature matters. Is that true or not true? Like, uh, should the bottles be warm? Because it's kind of cold here so sometimes. When you develop a cult following, you get <laughs> cult practices. Okay. And that means that everybody has a ritual that they've developed that works for them once. <laughs> because this is, can be finicky. Okay. It, I mean, it's not finicky. It's just that the knowledge hasn't spread yet. Uh, I commissioned a video that should be coming out in the next two months with best practices for the liquid effect. Okay, cool. Um, from start to finish that I had 100% input. I'm working with a creator, Mavericks Paint, okay. to get that out. Um, and um, temperature, it's a flammable liquid. Do not use a hair dryer. Do not use a heat gun. Just make sure it's room but, temperature. But can you? <laughs> yes, you can. But... Uh, so in <laughs> with sparklers, <laughs> no, no, it is highly flammable. Uh, All he I have wants people... to do, see, a lot of stuff highly flammable. I mean, come on. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, that's I, oh, I'm <laughs> I won't. I have two I guys promise. on Discord that uh, that yeah, won't let us stop know when you talking burn about yourself. how good it tastes, and really? I'm like, no. It is toxic. Please stop licking your brush. You know, Don't do this, that. this is, this is, I swear to God. Um, so I worked in a Ford Motor Company uh, assembly plant. I, uh -huh. Actually, I still worked there part time for 37 years and 34 of those I was in maintenance. So we'd have this guy for a long time came in with this company that provided us oil and uh -huh. he would literally taste the oil and go. Oh, that's a um Castro <laughs> blah 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 blah. Like what the what? How many times did you have to taste that in order to just know? <laughs> yeah, I mean it is. It's like, oh, the guy could talk your ear off too, and he was funny. His bald guy with a comb over and stuff. And every once in a while, he'd bend <laughs> over and the air would flip and stuff like that. But that, that's the perfect picture of a guy that tastes oil. That's I think that works. He could. He could taste <laughs> oil. He would take a sample of the oil. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, that's burnt. Yep. You got to so change the question, it. Was he right? Like, could he tell oil by the. the... Yes. Okay. Oh, he was knowledgeable. He put you to sleep talking. Like oh, you yeah. do. But I mean, oh, it's, uh, yeah, he, but he could. Yeah. So well, that's like Van Gogh used to eat his paint too, like a lot. Like he would clean his fingers by licking his hands. And that's why he would ended up in the hot when he painted Starry Night. And I might have some of this wrong. He was in the hospital, part of the mental hospital. He had all these stomach issues. But it was from all the paint that he had licked off and, and ended up with this big wad of oil paint, oh. basically, <laughs> just sitting in his stomach, causing all these issues was part of the reasons he was such a miserable person most of the time. You so, think the art and that's what I see, like Ben Comets, who I took, the, they always <laughs> lick their brushes. And I'm like, what are you licking your brush for? Stop it. There's a reason why Dirty Down has all of the warning labels on it. <laughs> and that kind of person is why. <laughs> I'm going to try the fire part, though. I am at some point. I'll let, okay. you know, I'll let you know how it works. Out. Um, 
Well, I, I can give you, uh, we'll do a rapid fire. Sure. Or dirty down. Go. Step one, and this is the, the thing that I have to tell everybody. You have to mix the pot more than any other paint that you own. I don't know if this is going to show through there, but yes. everything that's on the top, is it settled? There's a ball yeah. bearing in the base. 30 seconds on your vortex mixer, or you have to scrape the gunk, leave it all in there, and handshake for about two minutes. More than any other paint you own. Get it to do its thing. Vortex mixers saved lives, though, and arthritis. Um, <laughs> water. We've already talked about how that expands the color range. You can apply it before, after. You can play around with it. Texture helps dirty down do its thing, but more importantly, read appropriately. Because while there's a texture to dirty down, huh. the bane of dirty down is flat surfaces. Everybody's first instinct is to put rust on something that looks silver, looks metallic. But when you see real rust, you don't see the metal underneath in most cases. You see a brownish red that's underneath. Or with, with the moss, you can put it on rock and wood, everything that you'd expect. But... Um, it's semi-opaque paint, so the underlying paint is an orangey brown for the rust. Will do wonders. Um, and Flat then or finally, glossy? Uh, Does it matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um, a lot of people ask, "Is this going to damage my coat of paint?" It's an alcohol-based paint. No, it's not. Unless you take like a you know a, a chisel to your model, you're going to be okay. fine. Um, and that really covers it, with the exception of peripherals. Like if you are. Doing moss, what will help it read as moss is other vegetation around what you're what you're working on. What will help it read as rust is uh, not just a perfectly flat surface, but something that's texture that's corroded. Um, and uh, yellow rust is just an expansion to all of those. It does great things. It helps the moss turn into this. You can make it look like slimy and grimy by mixing the two together, like ooze or, or radioactive sludge. Um, or you can mix it with rust to help achieve a, a brighter color quickly. That's cool. that's the rapid fire advice for that's perfect. Papers. That is perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been awesome. I, I want to have you back after some of our guys kind of <laughs> go through this and we'll like field some questions maybe or just, you know, I like this conversation and more of like bringing the hobbies together and find hey, a way to kind of do that. And everyone, there's a Goblin's Hut uh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so hey go watch their thing subscribe to their channel let's let's get them some subscribers as well they probably have more than we do oh uh, i don't actually no, so. he does not no. really <laughs> instagram instagram's the best place to find me i posted okay. three videos uh to get the shorts on youtube to link them elsewhere but mm -hmm. yeah I, I really appreciate you guys jason scott having me on Dude, um, thanks mark this has been great it's, I, it's been a lot of fun truly really cool <laughs> all uh, right we're back what'd you think scott super nice guy super nice guy and I, I, I really hope somebody Bryce even I, talks to you. I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> that he didn't like shoo me away from his table. That's all right. I, <laughs> I filled him in just so everyone knows. It's been filled in uh, on Creeper here. <laughs> and we're good. Uh, but no, great guy. Thanks for coming on, Mark. Uh, I hope you uh, get some uh, business from us. I really like, I want people to try stuff and I want to bring this hobby together. So thank you so much for coming on and we'll see you soon. We're trying to get him to come to Wonderfest. See if we can get him a table. Not this one. Next year. Emails, voicemails, and corrections. What do you want to start with, Scott? Take your pick. Let's go to voicemail. All right, here we go. Voicemail number one. Hello, Model Club TV, or as many of the people refer to it, the other show for Model in a Movie. I'm just calling it's to Brian uh, Clark. say I really feel yeah, bad. Yeah, I know it was a Jason put Adepticon on the good show um, first and then uh, had to back it up again and show the same thing again because someone's a little butt hurt. But, you know, I understand that, Scott. When you're not secure and confident in who you are and your skills, you have to bring others down. And I haven't even called in or bothered you because, you know, I felt like we were on the same team now, but apparently not. You're still just the sad, sad gelatin mold of a man you were before. Oh, well, that's, uh, see you soon. A gelatin mold of a man. Ouch. God, he, just, he just drolls on. Um, must be the English teacher in him. So I, I have a few comments. Oh, here we go. Okay. okay. Yeah. First of all, this, this show was first. Okay. All right, there'd be no model in a movie if it wasn't for all the work and groundwork that I've laid here with you. Okay, so 
that being said, okay, I feel like, and you know, you'll hate this, this, but I feel like I'm the Beatles and I laid all this groundwork for some fucking half ass <laughs> fucking bullshit band or something that he's in that wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for us. Okay. So that, that's part that's I will I agree with that. <laughs> I okay. agree with that a bit. So, you know, that being said, it it's this is model club. Okay. That's model in a movie. That's we're gonna work on this while we're watching a horrible movie. Okay. This is model club. This is where stuff like Adepticon belongs. Okay. <laughs> so all that being said, okay. We're the Beatles. He's the Go Go's. All right. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. All right. All right. But there would be no Go Go's if there wasn't the Beatles first. Okay. So uh, I, I do want to defend my uh, putting of Adepticon information into model. And like, well, you can defend it all you want, but I'm going to. And here's why. And it was more of a workbench conversation, which workbench, con work, workbench conversations are going to take place over there more because we're more apt to actually have built or paint something. So that's where those <laughs> are going to happen. Solid. So, if I can just so you with it. When we're actually talking about building models, that conversation might happen on the other show. That's why. All right. Yeah. Voicemail number two. Man, our club is purple. And that is ugh. Well, I know what Whoever, it said. I know what it said. I know what, what it said. It, it, it said say? model club is poopy. And Scott is mo That's what it said. Well, they were getting ready to say that and Scott is marvelous. That's what it said. Yep. Right. That, had to that be was. It. We love you. Thanks for calling in. Uh, okay. emails. emails. Scott, we have no emails. Okay. But we have a letter a that letter? came in the mail. Like, legit came in the mail. Oh, shit. Yeah. Where's this postmark from? Oh, I know who it's from because they signed it. <laughs> oh. What number am I thinking of? 69, dude. And they sent it to this. Uh, because of this episode specifically, we have a Bill and Ted. So here we go. From Big Daddy David Dave Horvath. I can he really call himself Big Daddy? He's not that big. Dude, he's got like 85 kids. Oh, yes, that's, he oh, yes, he is a big daddy. <laughs> yeah, he is a big daddy. He's big he's... daddy in the actual term. Yes, he's like 85 kids. Now it makes sense. <laughs> I'm an idiot. All right. Surprise, his wife can even walk after all the kids. Oh, ow. Had. Whoa. Okay. Okay. She's a lovely lady. Lois, we love you. Okay. Oh, after the kids, not after them. Yeah, no. Dear Scott and Jason, congratulations on reaching this milestone. Enclosed, such a filthy mind. Enclosed, well, wait. Enclosed, you will find some little somethings for your celebration. Play safe. Oh, my. Which one's mine? Well, I think we all know. <laughs> Seriously, thank you both for your dedication, hard work, and labor of love using to bring this bi-monthly podcast. You never cease to entertain and enlighten us. Thanks also to your significant others for putting up with this craziness. Can we stop for a moment and I, like, yes, thank you to both of our significant others for dealing yeah. with this garbage. Yeah, mine's about ready to hit me over the I, head. I know that's why. So, uh, finally, thank you to all the amazing guests over the years. The stories, tips, product highlights, and in-depth information has been wonderful to follow. It truly covers the hobby better than any other format I can think of. If I were to leave Facebook tomorrow, I would miss very little in the way of hobby news. That speaks volumes to what you have accomplished. This podcast deserves way more attention than it's getting, and I wish you all the continued success. Best wishes for a very long, long run, guys. Sincerely, sincerely, Big Daddy Dave Horvath. So, this I love this. I think I might frame this actually. Big Thank Daddy's you, Dave. awesome. Oh, yeah, I love it. He is awesome. Great participant. He's awesome. His wife's awesome. Great people. Um, great I guess kids. He's got his kids doing this now. So, oh. That's I'm going to find that picture and put it here. Oh, no, I can't because yeah. there's kids in the picture because face YouTube will get us. Yeah. So. For those of you who don't follow Dave Horvath on Facebook. 
He had a picture of a bunch of kids building models on a Saturday night. It all looked like him. So, so they, they had to be his. But I think they were just, they might have even been neighborhood kids. They could have been kids he dragged in off the street and forced them to build his ki- collection. I don't sure. know. But he's got like 58 kids. He's, it warmed my hard. dead heart and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Seeing what they were doing, hanging out, building stuff like, like it used and to be. And 3D printing is going to be so awesome. So that's our show, everybody. Enjoy the gallery here at the end. Thanks to Dirty Down and Mark Henry. Promo code MCTV. Go over there and spend some money. Well worth it. And we'll see you next time. Episode 70. Be sure to check out our good friend Rob Madison at Monster Model Review. Yep. Uh, Gary Frayed. um, Just Paint It. Just Paint It. Brent Krug. uh, Scale Model Review. There's like... We got to get that like that episode together with all the other YouTube guys. And so. you know what? What we need is a, a frame to put up here at the end with all these. Oh, more work for uh, me. Okay, that's great. <laughs> I will do that. You know I what? Will. You know what? Spend a little more time on this and a little less time on that snooze fest with that fucking boring ape. Okay, and we'll be good to go. All right. Say goodbye, Scott. Goodbye, Scott. Oh, your video is going at the end. Oh yeah. Everyone Enjoy. Might stick around. Stay. You could put this at the beginning and said, "Hey, everyone, better stick around." Yeah, Jason uh, laughed at my misfortune.
Okay. You ready? Let's roll. You got it in there? Yeah, let's, let's, right, let's press roll. play on the slideshow. Then. You make the slides look neat? No, I don't care about that. <laughs> My I don't even know how to get rid of those. How do you even get rid of that shit? What? How do you, how do you even get rid of that? You click on it and hit delete. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Like you click on the line when the square is highlighted and you hit delete. Huh, let's see. Huh. Okay. Imagine that. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs>